I am not lost anymore. <laughs> you are no longer lost. Alright, let's see how scuffed this is. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see you! There's no way it actually works that simply. There's no way. Hey, B, say something. <laughs> oh my god, it works! <laughs> oh, your tail clips, though. <laughs> <laughs> Tails clipping. <laughs> I bet I can fix that. <laughs> it's still a tiny bit clipped, but we'll take it. Okay, all right. I will post a thing and then we can get started. Actually, while I do that, B, do you want to introduce yourself? Say hello. Uh, hi. I'm B. My channel name Dan is Pondus has a big tail. I do commentary stuff and art things and. I, I have a very tentacly aesthetic. <laughs> Tental so? tentacly aesthetic. <laughs> Look, I, I don't, I don't how I don't know how you would describe a tentacle aesthetic outside of it's very tentacly. I, I guess you know what you know what you're right. I I wouldn't have a better way of doing it. See, yeah, see, tentacle esque doesn't work either because it's not tentacle esque. It's just tentacles. Okay, I think I've got it everything set up. It's I think I think everything is working. So fingers crossed. I actually I'll throw this question at you just quickly because someone in chat said it and it's just funny. Uh, what was it like sharing a bed at VidCon? <laughs> um <laughs> You're like, how do I say this nicely? <laughs> Fun? That that sounds weird. <laughs> I, I I wanted to like come up with some sexy quip, but then I couldn't. And I was like, I want to come up with something that's not offensive, and then fun just comes out fucking weird. <laughs> oh wait, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, swear swear all you want. Okay, cool. I'm certainly not gonna fucking stop. <laughs> that's so hard to turn off. I yeah, I used to be really good at turning it off with my grandmother, and that was the only person I ever turned it off for. Wait, Honda's a lizard. <laughs> See, I, I started swearing like a sailor after uh, my grandmother passed, so I didn't have to worry about that at all. What, you didn't you didn't swear much before that? Oh no, I was extremely sheltered. I barely oh. even knew what a fuck was until I was like 13 or 15 or something. Actually, can I- I know we, we went over roughly like the questions and whatnot earlier, but just that that's prompted me. Could you actually tell us like a little bit about early you like kid i've never heard anything about you as a young person oh uh, uh I, don't, I don't really know what there is to say uh grew up the technically second eldest later t sort of turned into pseudo turned into eldest uh raised by not well a half good people half not great people um my family split at one point now we're we're hanging out with the the mum side of the family who we were like alienated from when i was growing up this this all sounds really completely out of context and horrible i'm sorry i'm very bad at talking about myself <laughs> i love uh, you're like trying to <laughs> remember yourself yeah i, I <laughs> this is not a not a topic that comes up um, okay, so, uh, I was raised as the eldest of a, well, we'll say mid, sort of middle class, white people Canadian family. Um, father was an alcoholic Hi, narcissist Marley and, and eventually Stopping ran to, wish to you a both head a good day and to stay I sharky around less 16, than three. I think. Uh, his parents owned the house we were in, we got basically kicked out of the whole family now we hang out with the mom side of the family uh now i do like art stuff and my siblings are heckin i am the most normal out of my siblings i mean uh can we talk about like just briefly mention your brother i don't know what we can and can't say publicly but oh your brother is I very mean, interesting i guess you could say publicly whatever's in the articles about him oh god <laughs> I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave how much you want to reveal about that up to you, but I I have told my parents about your brother and they still don't believe me. They said <laughs> pizza, it didn't happen. For... 
Oh, I I'll just have, straight up have to send you the pictures. <laughs> I I could just send you his his Instagram. Oh, uh, God. Shout out to my brother's Instagram at Trism Driver. Just for for chat. Uh, what would this? Her, her brother is blue, literally. Mm. Yeah, that's not that's not like a figure of speech. That's not like he's not like sad all the time. No, he's, he's literally blue, blue. <laughs> tattooed blue. The color blue. Mega mind. But my brother. <laughs> he also he gave us uh, some little patches at VidCon uh, with weird <laughs> C word because I can't say that word and it's so funny. Wait, we can swear, but we can't say. Oh, you can. That? You, you can say it if you like. It's just I don't. I don't use that that particular curse. Oh. That's a me thing. I like cunt. Yeah, I mean I'm Australian. <laughs> so... I should like it, but I just don't. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just like it feels good as a swear word. Just like, God, God. Well, it's like I feel like if I God, if I reserve it, I reserve it for mm. when it really hits. You know, That's it's like fair. once That's a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the once a year McDonald's run, except it's the once a year cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay, let me actually begin the proper questions before we get off on a tangent. Oh, that's right. We were supposed to, like, do things here. Yeah, it's like, we just got distracted. We're just chatting. Uh, okay, so we'll start with, you know, the most basic bitch question. Uh, what got you started online, and when did you decide to begin making content? Um, I'm gonna be real. There was never one immediate decision of like this is what i am now going to do it was always more of a or it originally started more of a this is kind of fun i'm gonna do this as practice i'm gonna do this in my spare time as a hobby blah 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 i'm gonna do this because i think uh i can help here and then i started making a little bit of money from it and i was like oh that's useful maybe i can use this as a means of like helping support myself while I want to like build my own comics. And then I ended up spending so much time working on the assets for like the 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 new channel stuff. It I I really haven't had a lot of time to go into my comics. So it it has effectively taken over as my job. So definitely by accident over the course of a decade. <laughs> Mm, so maybe not quite a happy accident, but definitely just incidental On creep. accident. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, how many people do you think that watch your content actually know that Ponder Sprocket is a comic character of yours and not just a persona? I would hope a fair number at this point. I, I keep trying to point people to the video and be like, Hey guys, by the way, she's a character. Oh god, please. 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 She's a character. Um... But yeah, I know that there are some people who've just seen like one video or they just like there are some people who just rewatch a couple videos over and over again. And if they happen to be some of my older content videos, it's like I, I can't really do much about it aside from continuously screaming, hey, guys, by the way, I'm white. But also people just sort of make assumptions. So it's like whatever. Yeah, I mean, meow. especially... Oh god, Lumi's doing the meow thing again. I'm going to ignore them. <laughs> Gotta kill that cat. Um, so would you actually categorize yourself as a commentator? Because I know for a while back in the day, it was the uh, slideshow commentary community was more where you were at. Like, where are you now, I guess? Oh, uh, uh, I guess in general, I've been moving more into art commentary. I kind of want to do, like, art discussion commentary essay quote unquote question mark things perhaps i i definitely want to move a little more away from drama stuff and everybody coming to me for you know every little problem they have mostly i just want to move into stuff that i enjoy talking about i want to enjoy 
comic con artists. I want to talk about 90s comic books. I want to do videos where I redesign characters yeah. as if they were designed in the 90s. That sounds really fun. Oh, that does sound fun. Actually, yeah, I've actually heard a lot of uh, the art girls recently are kind of shifting over into redesign territory, which I find really interesting, especially because we all have such different ideas of what we would be redesigning. I, th I think mm -hmm. Callie might have lit a fire under our ass a little bit with that. <laughs> But I mean, we've both said this, liars. Every every yeah. person in commentary I know in my sphere has said this. We all say, I want to move away from drama. And then it just sort of drags us back in, kicking and screaming. Like I, I think one of the, the big issues is like, when it comes to commentary, so much of it is, is so yeah. mentally draining. Because there's, a lot of the time it's just you. There's no other person filtering out like, who's telling the truth and who's not so all of the social interaction has to be effectively just you and you have to sift through who's lying and and who's being truthful and who's maybe not necessarily being truthful but maybe it's because they have a mental condition and they're not being super forthcoming about it but you can understand it oh my god what the hell was i talking about right <laughs> anyways the point is you don't really have any time to focus on your own mental well-being and the the point the process of working your channel up to get to the point where you can actively consistently see a therapist it takes way too long to get to that point and you're i can say from experience you're suffering the entire time mm, it's it, it does it I suppose from my perspective a lot of the time, do you feel responsible for a lot of the situations you look into? Like, even when you say, oh, I won't look at drama anymore, but then you see someone that's suffering from one mean or another, and it's like, oh, I could help. Like, I could do something about this. And you feel kind of that obligation. Is that something you've experienced or is that a me problem? <laughs> oh, that, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I Yeah. The, I, I think the easiest I could explain it is I understand the difficulty that comes with people lying about you and I can see how much more difficult it would be in situations where like the, the lies are so fucking volatile and vile and malicious in nature especially because like it's it's online like i i've seen it in a smaller capacity in my personal life and it's it's not fun and i don't really feel like other people deserve that fair enough i mean that makes sense no it does especially like looking through your back catalogue of content. Like you've always said, you don't do exposed videos. You literally just try and clear up misunderstandings and help people out. And what was it? How did you phrase it? If someone happens to be exposed by virtue of that, that's like your own fault or something. I remember you said yeah, something it, along those lines. Yeah, if, if, because a lot of the time it's, it, I will not end up making a video on someone unless they have made content making an accusation against someone else already. Like, it, it may be, maybe it doesn't necessarily have to video, be a video, maybe it, it, like, older me, maybe it could be a deviant art journal or whatever. I don't really do that those anymore, but, like, the quite situation would be a good example, because that was, like, a twit longer. Mm. Yeah, the, the quite situation. I, I have to admit, though, that particular situation was perhaps the, the swiftest and most effective self-defense I've ever seen anyone do. It was actually quite marvelous when i think about it but that's a different topic <laughs> quite marvelous <laughs> oh god i <laughs> oh, nailed it <laughs> i yeah, can't believe i set you up for that <laughs> oh god okay okay uh i guess actually speaking of quite and general commentary what are your like thoughts and feelings on commentary not just art commentary like the whole spec uh, spectrum of commentators I feel like I would have to subscribe to or, uh, oh god, what's the word? Take in more commentary content than I actually do. And in, in particular recently, that has just been, like, not as much of a thing. 
Especially if it pertains to, like, drama stuff. I, I've just been, like, ugh. I haven't even been able to read my comments for, uh, God, I, I don't know, since I uploaded the Pink Cat video. That was... Yeah, actually, I was I was gonna say I thought your last one was the Sappho video, but yeah, it was the Pink Cat video, yeah. which I guess I, I get leads like, like uh, a oh, bit sorry. closer to what you want, isn't it? That kind of thing. Oh yeah, I I have like another video that is uh, it was originally supposed to come out way before that one, and you'll be able to tell at one point because it references a thing I did for the video back in like 2019 or something. But you know, other shit happened and life gets in the way but yeah it's it's way closer to what i want to do it's still kind of drama-esque but i feel like you can't necessarily escape drama entirely with artists we're pretty petty bitches i mean yeah honestly so much god so much <laughs> just just thinking about it I'm like oh we have so much energy to be petty but for nothing else we it's, won't it's finish our work in work progress out. but <laughs> We don't work out the energy any other way. We're like sitting the whole time, which is like <sighs> our feet just jabbing, jabbing at the the the, 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 the floor. We need to work it out. Our rage <laughs> words. I mean, actually, that does that does uh, remind me. I actually don't know what type of content you generally consume. What what do you watch? Um. Oh. Oh. God. It it varies. Uh. Sometimes I'm just binge watching shows. Uh, a lot of the time it's, like, I just need something to play in the background, so sometimes I'll put on, like, a show I don't even necessarily like. Like, I've gone through, I want to say, like, seven season of Grey's Anatomy. I could not tell you a single thing about any of the characters except for, like, the ridiculous way that one of them died, because I thought it was so funny. <laughs> Okay, does that, okay, quickly, chat, this is your warning to, to get out if you don't want to hear. I want to hear. How, how did this person die? Oh, okay. So, no. for, first thing you need to know, spoilers for Grey's Anatomy. This guy had the nickname 007 because he, like, killed someone on his first day, or he almost killed someone. Like, you know, he's the assassin. Ha ha ha. Anyways, so they get this this guy into the, the hospital who'd been dragged behind a bus jumping in front of it to like save somebody else and their their colleague had stepped out earlier in the day to like go join the army he was quitting his job so they're working on this this john doe because nobody knows who he is they they have a guy's his identity he can't talk he's mutilated beyond recognition blah 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 and there's there's like a scene where he manages to get the main girl's attention and he starts like writing on her hand and she's like zero zero seven i don't understand and then she's like wait double oh seven george and he like dies later in the episode and i was like wait so they they just straight up don't know that it's him for the majority of the episode and then he just unceremoniously <laughs> dies off camera in a surgery scene what the fuck happened <laughs> behind the scenes on this I do, I do love thinking about shows and that when they kill off characters. It's like, I wonder how this came about behind the scenes. I wonder who they yeah, pissed what, off. Yeah, what were the politics behind yeah. the writing of this scene? Oh, God. Oh, actually, seamless segue into our sphere again. <laughs> Fuck, behind the scenes of commentary is wild. I was not prepared <laughs> for that when I got involved in it. Like, it, I, don't, I don't even know how to begin talking about that. I was not expecting so much nonsense to happen behind the scenes like I, bruh i'm just i'm just I'm bamboozled real. i didn't either and it's pretty exhausting it really is. i think as well because we spend so much time in commentary trying to like suss out bad situations and bad actors it hits even harder when like it's happening behind those closed doors and you're sitting here like are we supposed to be better than this yeah it's just ooh. That's not even a question. I'm just mad. <laughs> <laughs> this is fair. There's so many like little pieces about d just the job. It's like you think about it and it's like, oh, now I'm mad for the day. <laughs> it's just my day is ruined now. <laughs> Actually, I guess Hayden, I think that's most communities, though. I guess? What but I it feels particularly that hypocritical can be created here. and destroyed in a year. Yeah, especially when so much of the community is about like, criticizing others you would think like self-reflection would be at least 
partially influential there. Yeah, well, it's just the number of people that will uh, behave in certain ways or do certain things and then call out others for doing it, it just it drives me absolutely insane. Uh, but Phineas just said, what I notice is that friendships can be created and destroyed in a year in commentary. And yeah, I can see that. Uh, I guess it's because it's it's a little bit like high school on crack. Um, oh, like that's a really good analogy, actually. Oh, <laughs> I oh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh I how, hate that. <laughs> well, that's how I've always thought about it, where it's like it's everyone's on the playground together, and all the emotions run really, really high, really fast all the time. So friendships are formed very rapidly, uh, especially if it's a friendship formed during a drama. It's it's almost oh, trauma bonding. Yeah. Uh, but yes. because of that, they rush into it so quickly, you get so attached, and then the moment it steps out of line or something goes wrong, it crashes and burns just as quickly. It may also be partially that, like, you're more willing to reveal personal things to these people behind the screens, even if you don't know them as much because of the, the anonymity factor, the parasocial relationship of maybe you watching their content as well as them watching your content. So you feel like you know each other a lot better. So you're confessing these, these things that you don't confess until you're like five years deep into a friendship or type shit. And then like at some point something's gonna break someone's gonna betray the others and then all of a sudden there's all this dirt <laughs> the dirt oh the god dirt. The dirt. oh i'm gonna drop the dms oh god oh, i hate that Christ. shit well i mean i mean you and i had a very well have a very parasocial relationship i started as a fan of yours way back when and then just kind of st i don't know how the fuck i got here i'm here now i don't know how i got here it happened um like I've said to a bunch of people already, it's like, if you told me two years ago I'd be at VidCon and share a bed with Pondus Rocket, I would have just, like, fainted on the spot. Like, it was it was proper parasocial. It was wild. Um, <laughs> would it sound like the, yeah, the beginning of, like, some Pondus Rocket <laughs> call-out? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Pondus Rocket was in a bed with a fan at VidCon. <laughs> Oh god, oh god, the power dynamic, because I'm a little bit younger than you as well. Oh no. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, if I may. Yeah, of course. My yeah. my job usually is to just meow during this. But I'd like to point out you went from being in her comment sections to her bed and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. First you slid into the comment section, then oh, the DMs. No. Look at you go. I'm so proud of you. That's that's efficient I... right there. Yeah. Anyways, uh Meow, back to being muted. I do have a question for later, though. Heads okay. up, I did DM you about it, Bally. Oh, okay, I had uh, Anyways, question. uh, meow, meow, purr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. Well, actually, I guess I... I didn't plan to come down this road, but I feel like... Actually, how did you become aware of me? Because I... I actually... I think oh. I got my start in commentary from you as well, because you, like... I think you shared my first Peaches video or something? And I had a heart attack? And died. I'm dead. It happened. <laughs> oh, where you were talking about how like so many people in the community are fucking snakes. Yeah. All oh, those videos yeah. age so poorly. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, someone dragged you in a call with Ponda. Did that happen? I don't remember that. Someone in chat just said that. I don't remember that. That sounds vaguely familiar. You know what? I think that's like very similar to what happened with Chuli as well. Actually, or or like we they we just both ended up in the same doodle tone stream or something. I think the first time I ever spoke to you like over Discord, I think it was the uh, Smash or Pass Pokemon edition. Oh, I think that was literally the first time. Speaking vocally, yeah, absolutely. That was yeah. the first time. <laughs> what an introduction. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I introduced you to the concept of being destroyed by a whale lord. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and watch that sometime because oh my god. <laughs> Meow. That's such well, it's an icebreaker. We'll, we'll give it that. Oh my god. Oh I guess... yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's something else I kinda wanted to um run past. Not just you, but other creator friends of mine. Do you find it's actually a little bit easier to become friendly with other creators than it is just, like, random people online? Um... I... 
Perhaps, but I may just be saying that because of like the parasocial relationshipness. Although it may be actually, yeah, because I I have a lot of difficulty with like the beginning stages of relationships and it's just like the learning parts about people it's like once i once i understand like a little bit about how a person works like what they like i'm like okay i feel a little more comfortable with this but the process of getting there is really difficult with creators i feel like when they're making creators, videos kind that of a one specifically in the pertain thing. to like once themselves you become friends as a person with one, yes you get the parasocial people. relationship aspect but it also does give me an idea of like the things that you're into or like the kind of art that inspires you or like the kind of things that you think are funny or or like from the clips that you you use in your videos the kind of media that you watch stuff like that and that gives you an idea of like okay so like we have these things in common so if i talk to them i know that like these are potential options basically it gives you am ammunition for talking <laughs> material which i fucking suck at so i like it I think also as well because uh, if you're in a space where people you know know about your YouTube channel or something like that, for me it help it almost helps alleviate any concern of them actually being like you know a fan if that makes sense. Like they might like or, my stuff, but it it feels more equal footing. Or them being weirded out by your job, uh... which is terrifying. I'm I I'm so hesitant to introduce what I do, it, and like, you know, gladly, I don't, or not gladly, what am I talking about? <laughs> Thankfully, I don't, I, I don't interact with people very often, but when I do, every once in a while, they'll be like, oh yeah, so what's your job? And I'm just like, oh, I make online entertainment content, like art and whatnot. Like, I'm so hesitant to say like, yeah, I make videos, I'm a content creator, because I don't want someone to like go to my channel and be like, ugh, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that I, I do actually have, uh, I guess, that currently not employed with them, but I have a job that's like a normal sort of thing. So if people ask, I can tell them that, even though that's like, I very rarely do that at the moment. It's just easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's more <Yeah>. respectable. <laughs> See, my social anxiety is way too bad for me to be able to, to hold like a regular nine to five, whatever. Like I get way too exhausted from all the social interaction i'm just i'm dead any other time of the anytime i'm not working i'm just deceased so it's like you got you got to work for yourself at that point yeah well i mean so many of us artists people it's like please leave me in my cave i wish to draw and not speak be gone exactly leave me at the bottom of the ocean to make things don't yes. talk to me yes it's like please perceive my art and nothing else thank you <laughs> yes well it's like even you know, i do that i, re I just retreat to my bed for like three days as like please do not even look in my direction thank you yes yeah, okay yeah, I but like do that because then i feel guilty about doing mm. it to demona oh well yeah she, pets are different she, she just said a boot a boot <laughs> lumi don't bully the guest okay. i will absolutely bully the guest it is absolutely what i'm here for also funny thing i will get some oh jesus in. fucking christ yes lumi uh, oh, I was just gonna say, like, guys, you at least draw humans when you're doing commissions. I draw furries. How the oh, fuck you do just... you think I introduce myself? You just came here to <laughs> shame yourself, okay. <laughs> Not even. But no, unironically, when people ask me my role, I just go, oh yeah, I'm a general character illustrator. And so you gotta find the right life. words. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, meow. I'm an independent creator. I'm an independent artist. Or independent commissioning artist. You're just gonna make it sound really fanciful, and then hope, and just hope they stop asking at that point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, it's just like I I'm a reductive tax accountant. It's like what the fuck is that? I I don't know, and I'm certainly not gonna ask. Yeah, it's like oh okay, you just just nod, and if they ask oh what does that mean, and you just stare at them, it's like please stop. <laughs> I'm begging you to stop. Just be like just be like trust me, you don't want to know. Oh Jesus, Scritus. How you have money? <laughs> Fuck! Imagine having a real job, he says, as he dumps gifted subs. Jesus. Thank you, Scritus. Um, Right, I've, again, gotten so far off course. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Okay, let me backtrack just a little bit. Actually, no, hold on. I did have a question kind of related to this. Um, 
So I'm just going to say what I sent to you. Uh, flip side, I know you've heard from a few other creators, because I'm one of them, that, you essentially, that you're essentially their inspiration for starting commentary. So, like, do you feel like formally apologizing to us for that, or...? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> I I wanted you guys to learn from my mistakes. I did not want you to repeat them. Oh, God. <laughs> Literally, though, it's actually... <laughs> Next thing you know, everybody's gonna be using, uh, like, unironic avatars that are different character... Or, oh, not different. Different races! I can words. I I can English. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, I remember very distinctly watching your videos uh, when I was at my first year of university, and I had no concept of anything you were talking about. It was during, like, all the Spock to stuff, and I, I actually had never watched a drama or commentary video up until that point. Uh, and I remember this because at the time I just listened to music and watched Ed's World on repeat. And then I found mm. your channel and suddenly my watching habits completely changed. And suddenly I'm oh. watching like you, I started watching the commentary bros. Like it just completely shifted my entire uh, media consumption on YouTube. And then I was just like, I want to try that. And now I have regrets. <laughs> so many regrets. <laughs> So sorry. <laughs> yeah. The origin story. <laughs> God damn. The, the origin of the regrets. Well, I know a couple of other creators that, that were kind of in our sphere have said the same thing, that you have been an inspiration for them. So I don't think it's actually, it's like not actually a negative thing. Uh, it's just everyone fumbles when they get started. We don't. Like, you fumbled as well. Everyone learns as they go, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was always going to be a bit of a mess. It's... I, I'm gonna... It's, I'm gonna be real. It's kind of... Baffling? It's difficult to... To really take in or comprehend. Just, like, the notion that people watch my content and they're like, Yeah! I want to do that! <laughs> like, I, I put out content and I... <sighs> I don't even know. It's just like it's, it's like my brain can't process the information, and it, it's like stuck in this this repeating file that just is not opening. It's not closing. It's it's just sitting there, and I don't know what to do with this information. I mean, I kind of understand that, like especially coming off the heels of uh, part one of the vault video. I made a three hour long video, I still don't understand what I even made. Like, it's very strange that you can make it and still have no concept of what the fuck it is. It, it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. Cthulhu. It's Cthulhu. Well, a lot of Cthulhu. it comes, a lot of it comes from, well, Cthulhu, yeah. There's, there, there end up being so many different strings, because all of this shit happens online. There's so many different connections between all these different people, these factions, these fucking Discord groups where everybody's chatting themselves up. And every everything is connected. Everything is connected. And somehow it always leads mean... back to Susie. Somehow. Yeah, right? <laughs> See? It's always Susie. It, it's like a... Yeah. Oh, what's the game? Seven layers of, of doodle tones. <laughs> it really is. I don't understand how Susie is everywhere. Oh, God. Um, Susie's got her fingers in all the pies. I, I don't know how she's done it. I really don't. It's scary. But I mean, does it, I guess, does it confuse you that people take inspiration from what you do? Or, like, what is it specifically about it that confuses you? I, mm, I guess just the notion that someone would look at it and be like, like, I, wa I want to copy this. Because I, I feel like so much of what I do is just... I, I don't know, maybe I'm saying it from like the perspective of like hindsight or self-criticalization or whatever, but like, I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> like, I, I don't get the appeal. <laughs> it's weird. Well, I think maybe uh, it's, um... Excuse me. <sighs> You're good. Um, well, I guess... Because yeah. you're thinking about all of the fucking trauma and heartache that goes on behind it. 
But when you're just watching it as an audience member, there's none of that at that point. You it's just, just... The glitz and glam. Exactly. And I, again, speaking from remembering back in the day, uh, because the final product is so you know put together and polished and final, uh, it it feels a lot more confident and uh, what's the right word I'm looking for here? Yeah, glamorous, really. It, it looks like it's easy. That's what it, it looks like. It's easy and it looks like it's fun. And then you peel it back and be like, what the fuck is this shit? What is all of this? In, in fairness, I don't know how it looks like it's fun because I feel like I get actively pissed off by the end of most of my videos. Yeah, but that's like, the I fun. Feel like each, each one is a gradient of me getting angrier. And everyone's like, I don't want to do that. It's like watching people going on a horror ride and being like, yes, yes, me next, <laughs> me next. Okay, so we're all, we're all masochists is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, okay, fair enough. Checks out, checks out. <laughs> Well, I guess, okay, follow-up, I mean, I think you've kind of already answered this, but more directly, uh, does it actually bother you, like, how popular the serious drama videos are when compared to the, like, passion project videos, or do you find they're about the same, or where do you stand with all that? I, I wouldn't say it bothers me, if only because I haven't done enough passion project videos of my own to really be able to register much of a difference like i i did like i don't know like one ish character creation video forever ago it wasn't that popular but it also wasn't that good so i'm just like okay it probably was just because the video sucked um but i i also get it and i feel like in some instances we could probably I don't want to say like use that, but really that is how to how to word it. It's like we we could use people's obsession with drama and like the new goss and the new tea and like just frame art content as if it's drama. I I don't know. I'm sure there's a way to do that. I was kind of thinking about it a few days ago. I'm sure I the the only one I've been able to think of so far is parody. And I, I have a couple on in the works. I've I've done parody art commentary stuff before, but I I definitely want to see if I could explore other means of like enticing people by utilizing that thirst for drama, and then like pulling the rug out <laughs> underneath them and giving them carrots instead of candy. Yeah, it's like, you're gonna be eating your greens today, kids. You're gonna have a good mental health day today, bitch! <laughs> this is not a request, this is a demand. <laughs> well, I guess, like, even your, um, your Pink Cat video, while that was, you know, drama-centric, it's still sort of, like, easing into more of the art-specific stuff you want to talk about. Uh, yeah. And then there's... Actually, no, probably a better example is your uh, video about your art offends my sensibilities. Because that was directly mm. addressing a drama thing that cropped up a lot in art commentary. But it was yes. a lot of art history behind it and art theory instead. Like, I was sitting here, I'm like, I, this is the type of stuff we talked about in my art theory classes at uni. Uh, mm -hmm. So I thought that was very good. Um, and then even from, I get, because I've had the same thought, I was like, how do I kind of shift things towards what I want it to be without completely alienating the audience that I do have. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of what the dream video for me was, because I got to put yeah. a lot of animation and just general hyper fixation into it. Uh, but because it was dream, everyone was like, drama? Drama? <laughs> <laughs> right. In in that sense, uh, oh no, oh no, my brain. Oh, oh shit, I was going to say something. I lost it. In that sense, we... The, oh fuck! Draw, uh, Hold on, let's backtrack. Let's oh, backtrack. Okay, oh. got it. Okay. Uh, in that sense, you can assen essentially take something that is drama within the community and turn it into something constructive by breaking down why the drama itself is stupid and revolving your art commentary around that. If we made more videos like that, more like broad generalization type stuff, that was more constructive I, that that's that's the the path i want to go that's well, where that's i want to go like so much commentary is destructive in nature not constructive which i think yes. is actually probably why so many people 
uh, in our sphere tend to look more to you for inspiration and guidance because pretty much all of your, even your early stuff was constructive in nature in the sense that you weren't specifically going out of your way to tear someone down. You were trying to, you know, clear up misinformation and help someone out more than anything else. Whereas when you look yeah. over at like the art commentary bros, a lot of their approaches, we're going to dunk on a bitch today, which is fun. Yeah. But it is just destructive, and ultimately, it's a bit like it's a bit like fairy floss. You know, it's it's sweet but short lasting and empty. Yeah, what what I have learned over my life is like you you can attack the liar, but doing so is is just gonna make you feel better in the short run. If you don't attack the lie, you're mm. gonna have to deal with a much bigger problem down the land down the road where it's. English, it's a bad language. See, see, this is yeah. this is why the scripting is great. This is why Ponderous Sprocket <laughs> was so great because fucking you can write yourself sounding super. You can write a character sounding super heckin' confident and and just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna read it out like the, how this character would read it, or or like you can cut out all your stupid fucking flubs or just like or saying words that don't exist in any sort of human language. It's it, that's really easy to do with editing stuff, where you can make yourself seem uh, significantly less like a dumbass little gremlin. Well, it's like I actively try and leave a lot of my dumbassery in my videos because I try to keep it as accurate to what I'm like yeah. as I can. But it's, it's impossible to actually keep it accurate because, yeah, you, you're going to edit out the pauses, the confusion. You already know what you're saying yeah. going ahead into it. So it's like... It's it, that's kind of a different topic, but it's really hard yeah. to be quote unquote authentic in content yeah. without it being shit. <laughs> I feel like it also probably doesn't help that a lot of my uh, authentic dumbassery is physical in nature. <laughs> what? Wait, so, what do you mean? Uh, what? You you, you uh, saw me at VidCon? Yeah, I'm like going like, through my memories. Like, what? Are you... Just, just I constantly see you making. Also. Making link sounds, just uh, 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 uh. So, uh, am I right to assume that you like move your arms around when you talk as well? Like you're a very expressive individual. No, you would be right to assume that I am a clumsy bitch, and I am constantly losing my balance, and and oh. just like flinging my arms out to rebalance myself, or like my my body just starts tilting to one side for no goddamn reason. See, B is a little bit like a little green whirlwind, is what I noticed at VidCon. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> you just have such powerful gremlin energy. You and Stream together is just it's, god, it's so much. <laughs> it's so I, much. I, I, I was thinking about it actually earlier today, and I was like, a very Scorpia and Entrapta energy. <laughs> it, it's true, Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, I've I've been editing the VidCon vlog a little bit, and basically anytime you're on screen, it's just very funny to me. I wish we'd gotten more footage of you bowling, and like, nearly throwing oh yourself god. off your feet. How did me you keep doing eating that? eating shit! <laughs> I mean, you were not the worst bowler there. Harley put up the baby rail, so... I, I wasn't the worst, but I was the clumsiest. You scared it's us. Just... We thought you were going to take yourself off the census. <laughs> that, I am ironically... That... Dude, I demand to see just you getting absolutely dragged by that ball. I heard stories about <laughs> that. I need to see it. I think Holly I has to... some videos. I need to pay someone to follow me around VidCon next year, and <laughs> and then I'll just compile every instance of me losing my balance and having to like readjust myself. Honestly, or next any year of the I'm gonna film even more. Sounds I make. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go and fucking balls to the wall next year as well because uh, VidCon was like we're, to, we're off topic again, but VidCon was so good. Like, Baller. I I said, Mally, yes. Just you get yourself one of those like crash helmets and just strap a fucking GoPro to it. There you go. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm no, not listen, going to do that. First off, you get to protect your head because knowing you're fucking bitch ass, you're gonna fall on your head sometime. And two. We get a normal person hype POV. Oh, fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> I was not even the shortest person there. Shut up. <laughs> Callie and B are about the same height, though. So that was that was fun. And yeah, then so Callie is a little bit shorter than me, too. So I was not that, I was not that small. <laughs> Still short. Meow. Okay, okay. Shut up. <laughs> Crap. I had a VidCon thing about you. 
Oh, I wish I had gotten it when stream was it? No, when Apollo tried to waterboard you. Because you had <laughs> the cup in your mouth and she just tipped it off. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was like, I thought it was empty. You're just like, what, what, why am I, why, why would I be drinking from an empty cup? I mean, in fairness, why would I be drinking from a cup sans my hands? But, you know. Yeah, why would it was just energy. in your mouth? <laughs> I was just holding it with my mouth and like using my lips to tip it so I could drink the water. <laughs> like my hands were just too far away. I'd also like to point out, as soon as you almost drowned, you immediately did it again. You just put it straight back in your mouth. I was thirsty! <laughs> oh my god. Fair. Oh, the gremlin yeah. energy she was learned very her strong. Lesson. She uh, learned her lesson. She wasn't gonna do it again. Yeah, no, Apollo's also a sweetheart. Um... <laughs> She has strong mum energy too. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, there was a VidCon thing that I. Oh, you were also uh, like vlogging at VidCon. Are you gonna do a video for that? Uh, yes, at some point. I, I'm a I'm a slow bitch. Yeah, same, same. I've been trying to edit down my vlog, and it's still like an hour and a half. It's it's oh, it's a lot. <laughs> Mood. <laughs> I'm trying so hard, but anyway, <laughs> we got very off topic again. Actually, I suppose, um, and you can veto this if you don't want to, because we didn't discuss it beforehand. Uh, I mentioned Stream earlier, uh, and you had sort of, you and Stream were not sure about each other going into VidCon. Were you, like, relieved that everyone kind of clicked in the end? Oh, yeah. I, I, I have a plan to, like, whenever I get around to my video, I'm going to take that clip from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, where it's uh, Rosa holding the dog. She's just like, <laughs> I've only known Arlo for 24 hours, but if anything happens to him, I would kill anyone in this room and then myself. Except I'm gonna replace Rosa with myself and Arlo with Stream. Yeah, you and St again, you and Stream ha both have very strong gremlin energy. You two clicked really well. And I was yeah, worried because, vibe. like, going into it, organ I thought everyone was, like, 100% chill on even footing. And then mm -hmm. night one, because you, you, you came a day late because you were hanging out with, uh, was it Shuli? Julie, yeah. yeah. I we didn't know where you were, and I'm texting, being like, "Where the fuck are you?" <laughs> and, yeah, I was at Sydney, and I had no service. Yeah, and I eventually I check uh Julie's Twitter, and there's a picture of you <laughs> on the <laughs> Disneyland rides. I'm like, I found B. She's she's in the state. <laughs> she's just already at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> the the video of me on the the Toy Story ride. I'm so good at jacking off. <laughs> well, I was like, at least we know where she is now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't just vanished into the ether. But I was like, she's already paid for the place, so like... Yeah. <laughs> figured you'd rock up when you rocked up. Uh, but because that you weren't there that first night, we were trying to figure out, you know, arrangements for sleeping and whatnot. Uh, and originally I was going to stay with Callie because Callie and I were going to move in together, so it just made sense. Uh, yeah. And then Stream kind of pulled me aside. I was like, Mally, I just, I'm not sure if I can bed with B. What if she hates me? I'm scared. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What what happened? She's like, oh, we had a disagreement like over a video or something like stream. She, I promise you, she doesn't care that much. It's because stream said the same thing to me when we first spoke. She's like, I thought you hated me because of the, um, the age up video thing. And I was like, oh no, precious Bab. So hearing from both of you separately, uh, after the trip, that's like, I love them now. They're great. It's so good. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I mean, it worked out for me. I got I got a bed to myself for the night, yeah. so that was pretty baller. But I think as well that that's something I've noticed from a lot of creators. Uh, it's like, oh, they made a video where they disagree with me. They must hate me. And I'm like, no, no, what? I, just, I worry about peeps. <laughs> for me, it wasn't like so much of the the disagreement nature. It was, I I, I don't really want to get into it. It, it was like a. Uh... Just like a, a thing where it's like, oh, I don't know how, I don't feel great about that. I'm going to have trust issues. And I've, I've worded it badly in the past and I feel bad about it. I feel, I feel really bad about making stream like, like nervous or, or scared or anything. But because streams are sweetie. Um, but oh my God, brain, brain. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, stream literally worried that everyone at the Airbnb hated her. She she chilled out over the she was it was like intrusive oh. thoughts like she explained oh, okay. it to me a bit later which is like fair. yeah I'm just worried that everyone hates that I'm here I'm like child that's <laughs> we love and respect look as soon as I got home I was like okay 
So how many people are talking in the background about how how like a uh, horrible I was to be around? <gasps> no, every no! I, I loved everyone on that. I was so happy because I I we all took a little bit of a a leap of faith with each other. Really, mm -hmm. like most of us weren't from America or around that area, so we're all taking really expensive trips. They all trusted me not to get us a shithole or run off with their money. <laughs> Uh, just praying that we vibed. Yeah, praying. None of us had met in person before. We had to share beds and rooms and stuff. Like, it was a pretty big sort of leap of faith for a whole bunch of yeah. essentially strangers to make. And yeah. I feel like we all got on really well. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I'm keeping next year. Although now everyone wants to stay in our Airbnb because we had the best vibes. <laughs> yeah, right? I've, I've they they like, were all like, oh yeah, there's the party, and then we're just like, uh, bitch, we're gonna go watch Gravity Falls yeah. and eat weed gummies, and they're like, so high. <laughs> well, now I wanna do that. It's like, well, that's the plan. We'll just get, we'll, we'll eat a bunch of weed gummies, or cookies, cookies are also, or brownies, brownies are also Ooh. good, and we'll get in our PJs and, like, watch stupid <laughs> cartoons and shit. Yeah, I've had it was, I've got like a list of people now that want to stay with us, and I'm sitting here like I have to prioritize my my my, my girls first. Day. I have to get a mansion B and B. Oh Goddamn! God. I've I've been floating the no. idea of getting two Airbnbs really close to each other so that I can make sure oh. everyone is able to mingle. But I next year, next year's problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel kind of bad for like um making so much fun of the commentary bros though i'm sure they had a good time it's just their party's vibes were a bit off and we were like nah nah uh, yeah <laughs> their party vibes were like yes yeah, somebody's like doing something weird in a back room yeah we're like you know what gravity falls <laughs> <laughs> oh god so yeah no vidcon 100 percent good very keen for next year we're gonna yeah. aim for a little bit longer next year if possible so very excited Maybe we could finally oh, yeah. drag Susie somewhere. <laughs> yeah! We'll, we'll, we'll get her yet. Alright, oh god, we got so far off topic again. We're good at that. Meow. I'm especially good at that. It's, it's just the brain, it wanders, it goes places. Spaghetti brain. <laughs> especially because so many of like my questions and that, they're very... Not, not grim, but you know, yeah, kind of grim. It's like asking about the state of commentary and whatnot, and we're just sitting here like, VidCon, VidCon, VidCon. <laughs> They're thinky questions. They're thinky questions, and we are but poor idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we are troglodytes. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, we'll... why are you surprised? I mean, we're not. Like... <laughs> we're just acknowledging Yeah, I'm... I mean, unironically, that's how I expected it to go. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, we will Anyways, circle back uh, to a meow. real question, though. I'm sure we'll get off topic again. It happened. Uh, okay, so... Um, right, my next question was... People have been saying, and I say people, I mean audience members, have been saying that the uh, commentary community, and specifically the art commentary community, is worse now than it used to be. Pretty much a, a, a post-Toby drama world. Do you think that's true, or do you think... Do you think that's just a case of, like, I'm living through it, therefore it's worse? Ah, uh, yeah, I feel like it's definitely the I'm living through it, therefore it's worse. It all may also have the fact that, like, the art commentary is getting, or the art commentary community in general is getting bigger. Because we've also, like, adopted some slideshow commentary people, like, into it. And, like, in general, the audiences have kind of crossbred. Uh, so I think it, it may also be a result of like different community toxic drama shit like kind of blending and it making it seem like there's a lot more of it especially because now that like the communities are in interconnected the drama's interconnected which makes it seem a lot bigger and all-encompassing than it is although in fairness there have been some commentary things not art commentary things but commentary things that have like seeped into the mainstream where like mm. i don't know like my blue brother hears about it and like he oh. he doesn't listen to commentary stuff at all but like the illuminati shit cropped up for him and yep. he's, we started talking about it and he was like yo what the hell is this and i was like how do you even know about that <laughs> Yeah, I was at the dinner table with my mother, my father, and Barb. So we were having we were having dinner together. Both my parents are over sixty years old, and Barb is a band kid, so she doesn't watch commentary. <laughs> um, and my mom turns to me and she's like, "Mally, 
have you heard about about this this woman that was abusing like abusing copyright or something? And I just stared. I'm like, what the? How do you even know those words? What are you talking about? And she was talking about Illuminati. And then like oh, a week later, she comes back and she's like, Melly. Uh, have you heard about th- this woman being inappropriate with her fans? And I was like, how do you know about Colleen? What? <laughs> and we're just, oh, oh, it's so bad. And then another time, I guess this one makes a little more sense in the mainstream. But again, my mother, God bless her, turns to me and is like, Melly, why is J.K. Rowling bad? <laughs> just like, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's Actually, wild how it spreads out. In reference to, like, the question of whether the community is worse now than it was. I am interested to see, like, community history essays that I hope will exist in the future. Like, essays that talk about, like, community drama that we are currently living through, but they do so from the perspective of, like, someone who was never there, someone who who never lived through it, and then you get to see it from the, the eyes of, like, a biased party, and you get to to hear, like, really how petty and dumb it is from the perspective of someone who does not care. Well, I mean, that's a little bit what happened with, um, Cecil's video going over Toby and Peaches, though the thing I <laughs> Skritter said in chat- I want more of that! Yeah, or even, like, what Tro does. Uh, but history classes will be covering the Toby and Hopeless Peaches drama to give context to World War Three. calling it now. It would not shock me. The, I, the Toby drama has spiralled into so many different sub-dramas that it's just... It, it's the world's worst tree. It, it yeah. really is. Because it's like... See, the, 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 this proof though, like, it, it connects itself to so many different things, so it seems a lot bigger than it actually is. Because, yeah, the, the Toby situation was just Toby was shit, got called out for being shit, and then it was handled poorly from there. And it spread. So it went it went Toby, then it went to Peaches, and then there was like a. Who was the middle ground? There was a middle ground before it hit Shannon, and then it sort of hit Kai and Omnia, and then it hit Kai, and then it hit John Swan, and before that, John Swan had the dream thing, so that's like an offshoot. It just. Oh, God, it just goes forever and ever and ever. Uh, and then it circled back around and hit Spockta, and that kind of tied into Junkie and Fa- It's just, oh my god, I'm going to kill someone. Me. Everything I'm going to kill me. Everything is connected. It's a canon event. The web's connected. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. We're in the Spider-Verse! Luke. I forgot Luke. Luke was the one before it hit Shannon. That's right. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. God. Who else? There's- I know I'm missing some connections in there, because it just kept going it's still kind of cropping up to this day even because now yeah like, it, oh, oh god I, oh. anyway anyway <laughs> you know <laughs> when i made my my first hopeless peaches video i sat there i'm like oh i'm so late to this no one's even going to listen to me and then it just never stopped <laughs> yeah it never ends oh it helps that what you were saying yeah. was like things that people I think that's why I promoted your video back in the day is because like I was so mentally burnt out by the time the hopeless peaches thing came around and everyone was asking me to look into the hopeless peaches thing and I did not (laughs) feel up to it I did not want to and then your video came out and I started watching it and I was like oh my god this is saying so much of like based on like the very minor things i am aware of of this situation this is like pair not parroting but like very well reflecting my own Uh, stance on the matter it it was definitely parroting like your content one i think there's even some lines in that video directly ripped from your older videos i (laughs) i think i have some of your mannerisms like not on purpose but because they had already snuck their way into like my mental vocabulary uh, yeah. So I would repeat certain like phrases that you had used in old videos, especially because I made those videos thinking of your videos. That was what I was trying to emulate. So when you shared it, I was like, I, oh, I hit the mark. <laughs> I did the thing. <laughs> it's a shame that my information is so fucking outdated and now those videos are trash. <laughs> if I get one more fucking comment saying this aged like milk, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> oh my god. 
Every time I get that comment, shut the fuck up, Luby. I have to physically resist the urge to reply, so did your face! <laughs> like a child. Like most most videos age. It's, it's just like, okay, whatever. I feel like it ages like milk if it, you know, it's off in 30 days. Well, I guess another thing as well is, uh, it, it's so obvious when people have only seen that one video and none of what happened after, which, fair yeah. enough, like, you shouldn't have to read the deep lore to have an opinion on a video but when people like leave comments going like have you ever apologized to rosie i'm sitting here like rosie's my mate have you not been paying attention <laughs> like what so it, it does frustrate me but but like you said before people a lot of the time they just see that video and they they don't see anything else and you can't really hold that against them mm -hmm. like if the video is bad it's bad on its own merit yeah, I did it. Oh fuck, did you? Hold on, let me check. Hold on, I'm about to- I- this is the one time I get to respond to this comment, hold on. I'm doing I had to right satiate now. her- her urge to My call urge. me a fucking ugly. Which- which oh. channel is it on? May, I literally sent you a screenshot of it. Okay, hold on. I Listen, to to I am- now. Look, B, the one thing you're gonna learn about me is I- I am the weird common sense friend she's got. I will discourage her from doing really stupid shit. But it's, it's not stupid. It's not going to hurt anyone. I encourage it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I've actually I've like, actually got... This is very much a side thing, but you reminded me. I've got yeah. a... Uh, so Barb's sister, younger sister, uh, is like my biggest fan. She has no concept of anything I do, but she watches all of my shit and is just... It's adorable. She is my biggest fan. Uh, but she is also so ready to throw down. I've I've had to tell that girl so many times, like, look, I understand you don't like seeing people shit talk me, but you have to let this go. <laughs> and well, it's so funny. <laughs> oh. I think you're a stinky poo poo head. Come at me, bro. I I know that, Lumi. I know you think that. Yeah, exactly. This so Barb's sister can come at me now. Oh, I'll I'll let I'll let her know that that you're fair. Yeah. I'll let her know. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I can handle it. Oh God, uh, also, it I'm not your only moderator. I'm your most active moderator. You're my yeah, reliable moderator. Okay. okay. Yeah. As okay. much as I bully you, I am actually handy. You are good. You are very good. Otherwise, Anyways, I wouldn't put uh, up with meow. Abuse. <laughs> Shut All up. Right. Meow. Okay. Okay. All right. Right. Got off track again. I did the thing again. Um... Actually, you mentioned this, like, really early on in the stream, but I want to loop back around to it. Uh, so you mentioned in your update video, uh, people mistakenly thinking that you were a person of colour because of the Ponder Sprocket character. Could you just, I, I guess, go over kind of how you became aware of that misconception and just kind of your thoughts around it? Okay, um, it's been a while, so I'm gonna try to remember. But I remember it ha coming at me in three different instances. One where, like, I think somebody left a comment or something, and and I had to clarify. Another one where, like, somebody else was telling me about an interaction they had where, like, someone was all like, Oh, yeah, it's it's weird that, like, Ponder Sprocket's white, but, like, the, her persona is, is brown. And then they were all like, um, actually, the persona is the gremlin, and Ponder Sprocket is a character. And then someone approached me specifically, uh, like, in Instagram DMs. And we had a discussion there, and I did not originally agree. And that that's usually, like, a thing, is, like, I might not originally agree with you, but I'm, I'm definitely gonna mull it over in my head for like the next few months so i might end up agreeing with you like half a year down the line and that basically is sort of what happened is i may not have agreed with them initially but as time went on and i started thinking about it more i was like yeah it's it's probably a, an issue where like if somebody is specifically looking for the opinion of a person of color if they mistake me for a person of color i do not want to take away from an instance where somebody is looking for the opinion of like a person of color so I'm just gonna, like, make that distinction now and try to veer into making that a lot more clear in the future as much as I can. Yeah, because now you've been working on the assets for, you know, 
the the gremlin persona that does actually look so much like you. It's kind of wild. I was not expecting that going into VidCon. <laughs> yeah, wait, it's, it, it it's weird. Wait, B has an octopus tail IRL. Yeah, no, it's wild. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, they're also That's green. Wild. Just like you know, that would yeah. make sense. Your brother's going to go green. It works. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> well, you know what? My my view on life has changed. I cannot believe it's, that B is a fucking furry. It's all just really, really elaborate camouflage that allows me to hide on camera. Like, have you not seen an octopus change their camouflage? Of course. I'm a Yeah, I do that. I do that. But um... with my tail. And then you can't see it on camera. Boom. Magic. I, I, I know you're gonna hate this question, but how are the assets going? Wait, what? Like, how are okay. the asset creations going for the rebrand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I thought. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. God, that's such a- that's just an artist thing when people ask, like, Oh, where's the thing you said you were gonna draw and you just kind of walk away? Like, mm, I do not see. Yeah. It'd be hey, almost Mally. nicer if you had, like, a- like, a loading bar above oh your God. head that shows how far into a project you are. That would be good. Hey, Mally. I already know what you're gonna say, also and the answer is never. <laughs> Go on, tell the audience what I was gonna ask. Lumi was about to ask where my ref sheet is. Yeah. <laughs> I have literally never drawn a ref sheet for any of my characters. Actually, Just... the hilarious thing, I did do a ref sheet once. It wasn't colored, but I did a ref sheet for my persona for that video I mentioned earlier that I, like, did something for back in, like, 2019. And it's the only instance I've mm. ever proper done a reference for, like, one of my... Well, uh, yeah, because I never made a reference for Ponder Sprocket either. <laughs> I mean, it may not have been a reference, but you did have enough sprites for people to reference from. Bro, also, I've got so many sprites! What for... are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. Your sprites have textures on them, and they are full of gradients, and you never even sample them to draw your character. You that literally eyeball the colors. I do eyeball That's them, one yeah. thing. Second, B, just for context on why this is such a loaded question, this is like something I've been asking her ever since we fucking met. Yep. <laughs> frequently. This is a frequently asked question, not just by Lumi, but by most people I meet. I'll make Except it when I, I make it. I do it because I know it pisses you off. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, yep. at least it'll come out sooner than Yandere Sim. I feel like Bible 3 will come out before Yandere Simulator. Uh... Oh. <laughs> oh god. Actually, speaking of projects that are taking forever, how's that, like, multi-part mega bullshit project about, what is it, cats? Or something? Oh, that's actually moving forward this oh? weekend-ish. I have to record some extra stuff for it, but I have an editor lined up who was all like, hey, you got a job for me? And I was like, hey, I kind of do. Let me just, like, record a couple extra things. Oh, let's go. I'm so excited for that, because I, I saw you were drawing everyone's, like, little sprites and whatnot. I'm Also, I just need the context for the lines that you had me read, because what? <laughs> I I feel like it took years off my life reading some of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, working on the video has... Oh, the amount of gray hairs that I have accumulated working on these videos... <laughs> These videos will be like a big foray into the end of this saga of the channel. Especially because each video effectively covers a different aspect of the drama that is the main focal point. So you got like the... the I don't even know how to like describe it without giving things away. It's like you've got the, the element of like this person shouldn't be involved and everybody acknowledges but that they shouldn't be involved, but they're involved anyways. You've got the, the one person who's screaming ableism or transphobia or racism or whatever their buzzword of choice is. You've got the emotional manipulator. You've got the person who started the fire. You've got the, the fire pokers, the stokers, the bitches, the stitches. <laughs> We've got oh, the whole sorry. damn squad, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, how how many hours yeah. roughly are you guesstimating for this one? Um It's hard to know. I know the first video currently sits at least like 25 minutes. It's okay. one of the shorter ones. Um but I have to add maybe at least 5 minutes of content and the fan art feature hasn't even been touched on yet. 
And then the second one, I think, pops up to at least 45 minutes. And then some of the other ones get to, like, how definitely many? past an hour 30. How, how many pots? Okay. Oh, one thing you need to know is that there are at least five different players. Oh, God. Why is it all? It, let me, most of them children. It, yes. I say uh. at least five, because it, it's kind of more like 5.5. Anyways, but th those are just the accusing players. There's, there's like, a, a other shit with regards to, like, the accused, and, like, the accused fighting back, and, like, how that fucking happened. It's, it's a wild ride. There's, there's at least six parts of this shit planned out. Oh, God. Okay. Well, actually, that that reminds me because you've you've heard me bitch and cry about the vault stuff repeatedly. Uh, yeah. It, it's frustrating. I find that people want a very clear cut bad guy in in these dramas, and maybe because yes. they're used to the commentary bros, which is very much you suck and here's why. Um, yeah. Where like I've just recently i've been getting comments where they say so wait am i supposed to dislike vault or wait who's the bad guy and this and that and i'm like children that's not how life works yeah. uh it, i mean it would be nice if the subject of the video was clear cut good it would make our lives a lot fucking easier uh mm -hmm. but does that ever like does that drive you off the wall just how people they they want a movie you know it they want a script and a, a storyline they can follow, and it's like, no. Yeah, a narrative. Yeah. But it's like, if you build a narrative, you're not not lying, but you're, you're building a narrative. Yeah. You're portraying everything in a way that may not necessarily be entirely accurate to how everybody viewed the situation going down. Oh, God. Especially because so many of these situations, they're not a situation they're an amalgamation of years of different people's bullshit yeah and years of different people's perspectives because mm. sometimes it's just like you know you have two people in a conversation and they both come out of the conversation having wildly different interpretations of how that conversation went down and then it's just he said she said screaming at each other and then they're children and it's on <laughs> yeah <art>. right <laughs> yeah I st actually, do you still use DeviantArt mm. after the uh, whole AI thing they had back back a few months ago? Not as much. I I probably will go back to it at some point, but I'm in the middle of one of my content anxiety spirals. So like like I said earlier, I'm not really reading comments at the moment. That that applies over to DeviantArt as well. At DeviantArt, it was I think even before this. Uh, on like it was before the YouTube comments because people chased me off of TV and are always coming to me asking me for help. Ah, uh, yeah, actually that that segue that does actually lead back into the other question. Um, you frequently mentioned in the past how many people come to you either with petty high school drama or serious crimes and how draining that is for you. Uh, first of all, how do these people find you and how is it they're approaching you? Because you've told me about a couple that have approached you in odd ways. <laughs> um, I, in some instances, I don't know how they find me. Uh, in others, they've, like, told me, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna nip that in the bud. Like, I, I had a bunch of people sending me, maybe not a bunch, but a couple of people were sending me drama shit to my personal email. And it's like, okay, like, I don't, I, I understand the, the want to, like, connect with me. But I don't understand where you got this email because I can't think of a lot of places where I have it actively listed as a means of contacting me. And eventually one of them coughed up where it was. I didn't even know that the email was visible on the site that it was on. I think it was Instagram. And I was just like, okay, well, I'll just delete my Instagram. <laughs> No, great. Problem this Instagram solved. is terrible. Yeah. It bit crushes everything. Why is it like that? Anyway, that's a different different grievance. Um, how is it yeah. they actually like speak to you, I guess? Because I've, I've had a couple of people reach out to me. Yeah, it's always email for some fucking reason now I think about it. Um, 
asking me to look into dramas, but I, there was one not too long ago where they asked me to look into a drama where they'd been accused of something that they definitely did. Um, I love that. <laughs> I'm like, why would you come to me? Um, and I went back and forth with them for a little bit. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll look over everything you've sent me plus what I found on stream. And they're like, oh no, I don't want you to look at this like publicly and I don't want you to make a video or stream or anything. I was like, then why the fuck are you here? Like, yeah, I, I have had instances where people like just come to me for advice and it's like, honey, you're sending me five Google Docs and like all of this backlog contextual information about all these random people that I don't freaking know and have no desire to know in my life at any point in my life. And you just expect me to, like, to comb through all this shit to tell you how to socialize better? I can't even socialize! <laughs> I can't help you. I can't lead the blind. I have no eyes. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, there's a reason my persona looks like... Yeah. Well, I mean, there's been cases where people do just come to me for advice, and I don't mind that as much. Like, yeah. it's different if they're asking me to, like, clear their name or fight their battles or expose... If they ask me to expose someone, I'm just like, stop talking to me. Uh, but yeah, I've had totally. people just say, like, I don't know what else to do. You seem like you know what's going on. I'm like, honey, I don't know what the f I don't know what day of the week it is. I cannot help you. But there's been a few who come to me with that. And it's always very frustrating because I look at what they send me and it's always just like, you need to move on. <laughs> like, you, you, these people need to disconnect from each other is normally the solution and they never do why don't they move i don't understand sorry that's just the me grievance one sec oh go ahead yeah oh, sorry i just had to send a text now nah, you're good i i completely lost my train of thought though never mind <laughs> <laughs> mood She's back on the toxic gossip train. Let's go. Oh, fuck. Oh, my, my chat God. made me watch that video. I... Oh. Oh. No. You know what? No, I'm gonna straight up call it out. I made you watch the response video. Yeah, Lumi did make me watch it. Well, I mean, I was going to watch it, but I, I watched it with Lumi. But we watched the uh, the Colin Ballinger song thing on stream. And I, I I almost had an aneurysm. It nearly killed me. It It's... It's one of those things where, it, like, every time we think YouTube apologies have hit the very worst that they can get, um, it, somehow they, they surprise us. Like, we, we thought the interpretive dance YouTube apology was, like, it couldn't possibly get worse than that. Lo and behold, yeah. Colleen pulls out the ukulele. It's like I, I, I was I'm... actually gonna bring that up, funnily enough, the interpretive dance. <laughs> and I will actually preface this that when I sent Mally the link to the Colleen video, I sent her a single screenshot from the video where Colleen looks absolutely deranged, and I just told her it's the best summary of how this video is gonna go. She and I think I nailed it. Deranged. She definitely she scares <laughs> me. The look in her eyes. Let me go find the natural. screenshot. Oh god. I'll find the screenshot and I'll post it into the muted mic chat so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Well, oh. you guys, I mean Ponder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's you ten keep minutes long. God, ten minutes of that. Oh. It 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 really screams like one of those like I had to make it ten minutes to get all the extra ad revenue. <laughs> Which is wild because that's that's not even the meta anymore. It's eight minutes now. Oh, wow. it's, it's been that way for a while. That. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't know that so. God, it was so- and it was one of those things where it's like every word out of her mouth made it worse. Like- Yeah. Oh, I, I already hated her because it was like everything was caught on camera, but it made me hate her more. It was amazing. It was like, um, oh god, what was that, uh, was it Darby Vanity, the video you made about where his response was what solidified your mind of him being sus? Oh, Destry. Destry, right, right. I have no idea who Mystery that was, Smith. but I frequently rewatch that video. I just like the energy of it. <laughs> yeah, that was one of those, like, <laughs> I I wanted to, it's one of those instances where you want to give the person the benefit of the doubt, but as soon as you hear their side, you're like, yeah, no, that's, that's, you, you had it and you lost it. 
that's a little bit like what happened with creep show art as well it's amazing how many of these people bury themselves with their own actions yeah like uh, especially some... the uh the commentary bros were specifically giving creep show art every possible leniency they could think of until that video came out and it's like you you actually had a foot in the door and you've slammed the foot and cut off sorry slammed the door and cut off your foot it was kind of yeah, wild. I remember that being like a, a really big thing was like everybody reaching out to her and trying to hear her side of the story and being met with silence or like just just her telling them not to defend her and them being really confused and hurt. Mm, but although I do think about uh, that side of commentary and i do like them i especially they're kind of like very entertaining monkeys um mm -hmm. but oh good lord the sh the shit play oh good lord they they always talk about the art commentators like they're so backstabby they're so snaky and i look over at them and it's like every week they're burning one of their own for fun i, I feel like the commentary bros are where a lot of our anxiety about connections behind the scenes come from yeah, I, I glanced over at Twitter the other day and there was like Tom versus Hipster. Oh. Diss track, and I'm just like, are what? We still doing, we're still doing diss tracks? I'm like, okay. I guess Colleen kind of opened up that floodgate again, I guess. <laughs> was that a diss track? What? I don't know. What do we call it? Diss track against herself, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely um, the response video was a diss track. That was, that was great. I love that he went out and bought a ukulele just to do that. It's good <laughs> shit. Well, yeah, you gotta make it authentic. Exactly. Oh, that was such a good response. <laughs> it was so funny. Meow. Yeah. God. It, it is interesting, though, seeing how drama is kind of warped and twisted over time. Like, I can remember very faintly back in the day before drama was, like, a monetary thing on YouTube. It was yeah. way more petty, way more volatile and stupid and vicious, but it was yeah. also a lot less, a lot less, less, just less. Also, there was a lot less pedophiles involved. Why is it always pedophiles? <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. why? Oh, God. I'm thinking, like, specifically to instances like the Akai Dahlia stuff, where, like, it, it was, it was all pretty bad it was bullying but it was very contained the community was quite small and while we don't have those original videos i can't imagine that those original videos had the i can't imagine they had the same type of content pull or view pull that that art commentary videos have nowadays but it's it's one of those things that's like infamous in the community because it was around for so long and it informed so many people that are like up and comers now oh yeah well i mean i i was never around for any of that stuff again the number of times susie like brings out the deep lore and i'm just blanking on it anything that has to do with like <laughs> deviant art or the ranting community but, but anything pre spockta i have no yeah. concept of and then I, yeah. I'll i be told it by... Susie has cited the deep lore to me many times, and I always forget it. I have no memory. Susie is a lore master. Really? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Susie is on my list for commentary therapy, but I know it will be an eight-hour session, so I have to <laughs> I have to plan ahead. <laughs> oh, it God. Good idea. But yeah, Susie is just tied intrinsically in everything. I, I, woman, I don't know how she does it, but anyway. Um, but yeah, this... Susie Burst. <laughs> Oh, it is. Oh, God. Um, but it, it is always, like, the weirdest, pettiest shit. And it's always the bullying and all that type of stuff. Uh, but now it's... I find commentary and drama and all that is very corporate in nature. Like you mentioned before, it's hitting mainstream and whatnot now. It, it feels like the drama of old was this childish uh, western. Yeah. And... Then the new stuff, it's very clinical almost. It's like there's check boxes for every drama. It's like, did they groom a child? Tick. Did they yep. uh, abuse their position of power? Tick. Like, there is a check box. And depending on I, how many they fill is how big the drama gets. I even had a, like, a conspiracy thought a few days ago of, like, what if the whole Colleen Ballinger 
shitty apology thing and this whole thing is just a smoke screen that that Illuminati set up. <laughs> like she paid Colleen Ballinger to do this like really shitty apology to take eyes off of her. And then somewhere in the mix, Shannon's knocking around because why not? <laughs> oh yeah, Shannon's like creeping in the back for back. Shannon is in oh what's her face? Blair's backyard just creeping and taking notes. Oh god. Actually, I will I will point this because I've it hasn't escaped my notice that the last three sort of actually what would you say the last big three dramas are? Because I would say it was like the last two were Colleen and Illuminati. Who was the big one before Illuminati? Tipster. No. Tipster's just perpetually in drama and it's very niche. <laughs> I just thought it'd be funny to mention him, man. The number of, why are people Man's always in some me? drama. I've had three people over this weekend. Weekend? What day is it? Yeah, over this week, ask me, <laughs> what's going on with Tipster? Like, I would fucking know. I don't know. I, I asked you, like, hypothetically. I wasn't being serious. There's okay. nothing to drag me on stream about it. Fucking well, hell. two other people have asked me besides you. I don't know what's yeah. going on with that. But no, who was the I last just like, be funny. big, big form drama? before that because i think there must have been one after shannon right yeah there was definitely one between shannon and illuminati but i can't i want to say it was like a like a smaller one or something maybe hold on i bet i can maybe, find it yeah maybe it just sort of got forgotten when the illuminati stuff came around chat what do you think do you remember Oh, what? Uh, the 21st so nice. night of September. It'd be so nice if we had like an art commentary community drama time. Where's Susie? Susie will know. Yeah. Susie. <laughs> so, well, actually, no, Susie, Susie only knows about the niche drama that no one else like understands. But if it's like front and center, they don't know. Uh, Omnia? Ah, uh, no. No, not really. Because Omnia's stuff, it was more. um specific to art Darth Pina? Yeah. Ooh, that could be a contender, oh. yeah. I yeah. think it was Daft Pina at the time. Yeah. yeah, that sounds accurate. Although I will say Darth Pina definitely doesn't have the same reach or fallout as Shannon, uh Illuminati, or Colleen Ballinger. Yeah. Spock as well. I feel That's like a, a lot niche. of it I feel like a lot of it is just because Daft Pina is connected to so many much larger channels because, you know, animation story time mm. video reviews uh i think oh, i i still think probably the last really big one was probably shannon with maybe duff pain or as like a follow-up because duff pain is definitely didn't get as big as any of those three um oh yeah no but that's the i i can't help but notice that the oh god i'm about to be that bitch oh, the women yeah the women. It is interesting to me that it's the women. And I don't know what it is. I ha I've i been thinking about it and I cannot put my finger on what it is about those three. Um, yes. So, Sims Mage just actually pointed out it was quite. Oh, that's right. Except quite, uh, uh, yeah. quite was innocent is the difference. Yeah, yeah but... No, no, no. It was innocence, true. And, like, I'm We're... not saying the man is guilty of anything. However, it was still a big thing that happened. Yeah. Them, so. Yeah, no, you're, you're with, talking with about regards, the scale. Yeah. With regards yeah. to, like, art commentary stuff, the the, yeah. the dramas are always generally, like, categorized in either, like, accusations or someone did something fucking stupid. Yeah. What's, well, like... <laughs> I suppose what really gets me about the three big, the three big women that got cancelled is the severity of the things they've been cancelled for. Yeah. And also not not just the severity, because other than Colleen, the other two didn't get accused of, like, grooming or anything. Uh, which yeah. tends to be more of a, a male-dominated field, if you will. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of, like, um, uh, what's that? You, uh, that Minecrafter? Um, Mini Lad. That was the one I was thinking of. Um, I feel like there's a lot more spicy drama around the women's ones if you know what i mean because so much of it is interpersonal relationships 
uh, and like crazy behavior. And I, I don't I mean, know exactly what it is, but I, I see the puzzle pieces and I'm trying to put them together, but I just haven't quite got there yet. I just... I mean, Mally, are you are you trying to tell me that you haven't tripped over and accidentally groomed like a bunch of children and then uh, them to moderate your social media shit and then proceed to put all the flags on him even though he was still a minor? Actually, no, actually that... Actually, Lumi, you just you made me think of something. So Colleen Ballinger, oh, no. uh, probably did object. It, like she's the groomer person. She's the one that's like possibly been abusing children, that sort of thing. I feel like yeah. she has not been dragged over the coals as like gleefully as Shannon or Luminati. If you know what I mean. Like when I'm thinking of the way that these people are covered, Illuminati and Shannon definitely got a lot more. Let's bring out the popcorn and put the bitch on fire type thing where Colleen's feels a bit more mm. level-headed in the takedown. Am I the only... I, seriously, well, stop I me think, if I'm talking nonsense. I, but. Think I, I think I, I know why. Because Illuminati and and uh, Creepshow Art were petty bitches. Colleen is a comedian. Yeah, her, her jokes are, like, tasteless as fuck and completely inappropriate based on, like, the people that she's showing the jokes to... But there's a difference between someone being a comedian and people being petty bitches. Creepshow Art's, like, whole thing was she was a petty bitch. Illuminati may not have marketed herself as a petty bitch, but she started her channel as a petty bitch. And people who have followed her through the years know that she's a petty bitch. Colleen wasn't a petty bitch. Which actually also ties into, like, why I think the, the women... Who get called out for this stuff get called out for like stuff that is so much more all-encompassing it's because they're manipulative petty bitches and when you manipulate people you need to create a web usually of lies in order to like sustain your manipulation so it's whenever it's like a woman manipulating someone they're not just manipulating one person they're lying to a whole group of people to single that one person out and make them look like they're fucking crazy. It's it's yeah. the big, it's go big or go home mentality, but for crazy bitches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. I, I, I can see that. Especially because well, there is like a, a dramatic kind of flair to their level of crazy when you hear all of the yeah. stories. Oh, and, absolutely. Well, other than Colleen and like, maybe creep show with some of the le like there's usually a couple of legal things dotted around but mm -hmm. specifically with shannon and illuminati so much of it is emotional drama as well oh yeah it's, yeah yeah it's not as clinical as like they committed a crime it's like they destroyed these people emotionally and the only uh course of punishment for that is uh, a community type punishment because you yeah. can't you can't legally get on to someone for being a shit person. Yeah. I mean, one thing I have noticed with the Colleen shit is a lot of people are hyper-focusing on the fact that she pulled out a ukulele rather than the fact that cough, cough, she is a groomer. She has I, literally her children. I Lumi. think it's one, probably because it's so ridiculous, but two, probably because focusing on that aspect makes mm -hmm. digesting the situation a little more... I can understand that, but what I'm trying to get at is people are hyper focusing on the wrong aspect of it, and it's not oh, yeah. something a lot of people have been pointing out. Except uh, for you, Lumi, because, because you've pointed this out to me every day for like the past <laughs> week. Yes. Lumi's just been on because my shoulder being like, hey, Mally, 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 do you know what Colleen is? I'm like, what, Lumi? <laughs> Colleen's a groomer. I'm like, yes, Lumi, you told me 10 minutes ago, Lumi. I know, Lumi. <laughs> it's literally it's... just constant. <laughs> Legal disclaimer, it's actually not that bad, but like <laughs> it's, it's something I have noticed. Like I hop onto any social media and I see anybody discussing like her bullshit. It's like, oh yeah, she whipped out the ukulele. It's like why don't you focus on the actual bad shit she did? Like no offense, the ukulele is her least like I think, bad crime. But I think as well, it <laughs> it's it again, it ties back mm. to that like emotional side of it. Yeah. Uh, when you think about like a child predator in that First of all, there's nothing fun about that. There's nothing you can point and laugh at. It's just a child has been preyed upon and it's horrible. It just sucks. Yeah. But when yeah. you hear about like someone so horrendous pulling out a fucking ukulele to sing at everyone, <laughs> it, of course it draws your attention because A, it's, it's 
funny. It's, it's funny, it's easier to digest, and it also highlights how absurdly stupid this fuck is. So it, yeah. I can see why people are drawn to it. Because otherwise we just have to focus on the grim reality of her existence. It, it, yeah, yeah, it really is the absurdity of the response. Like, imagine being mm -hmm. so fucking detached that after being accused of grooming, like, however many children over the course of, like, a decade or whatever, your response is to write a ukulele song whining and moaning about how it so hard to manipulate people when they call you out for manipulating right before you do it. You know, like, the one thing I will say. She did say, stick a knife into her bony back. Okay, Lumi, okay, in Minecraft, <laughs> step back. No, it was yeah. her bony little back. Get it right, Lumi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Lumi, you. I need taking things out of context for shame. Excuse That's you. <laughs> Oh god, yeah, Colleen is just, ooh, the woman makes yeah. me so angry. But anyway, <laughs> I feel like there was a point that I had to all of that, and I have completely lost the thread. Colleen has ruined my day. <laughs> uh, what was, on. YouTubers are crazy. Why is it always you? I, I mean, okay, that's not fair. The only reason that people say, like, why are all these YouTubers getting exposed for being bad? It's like, it's not that YouTubers are any more predisposition to it. It's just, A, they're easier to catch, uh, and B, it's more publicly visible. It's like when oh, people yeah. mention, um, back in my day, it used to be safe to play outside. And it's like, no, it's never been any more or less safe. It's just now we have a uh, quicker and easier means of seeing all of the shitty things that are happening. Yeah. It's like, sorry, it's always been bad. It's just we're not using milk cartons to say people are missing anymore. It's splashed over your Twitter feed. <laughs> so, yeah. If anything, YouTube is being exposed, uh, and my phrasing here is probably not the best, but it's probably a good thing. Because yeah. if no one was being exposed, it wouldn't mean that it's not happening. It would just mean we just don't means know. That nobody's talking about it. Exactly. It's like that whole like celebrities open secret type shit. It's it's happening. Like the Kevin Spacey thing or whatever. Mm. And it's I mean it is terrible that it's been cultivated, but it's always co cis men. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was just my default. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you specified cis. <laughs> Like, thank you, Mally. I feel very valid right now as a trans man that you are not including me in that. No, but you, you know what I mean. Like, it's, okay, <laughs> in fairness to cis men, it's not entirely their fault. Um, <laughs> but there are, I mean, there are those, those sort of legacy cultures that uh, have very much bled into YouTube and Hollywood and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's only just more recently getting weeded out more commonly and becoming harder to keep secret. Uh, so, while it sucks, it is ultimately a good thing. Mm -hmm. Someone somewhere's gonna be like, Mally just hates men. <laughs> Boys, I promise. I promise no. I don't hate you. <laughs> no, no, there's good cis men in the world. I mean, Phineas exists. Yeah, Phineas is pretty nice. Phineas yeah. hit me with their deep lore recently as well, which I was unaware of. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot. God, why does everyone have deep lore and commentary? I don't understand. I I just That's got hilarious. here. <laughs> Mally, this and everyone needs to have some deep fucking back lore to even get into commentary. Nobody who's had a peaceful fucking life online will ever get into commentary. That is just a fact. What's my deep lore oh, yeah. then? Do you really want me to whip that out on stream? Are you going to mention fan fiction? Because that's not, well. that's not deep lore. That's current lore. That's happening as we speak. I mean, I wasn't going to mention the fan fiction, but I, I was going to mention the fact that you grew up on fucking Tumblr. Bro, I that's had no issues. Damage. I, literally no, though. I will, look, I will... Oh, actually, Moonlit's got me. I was like an Onision fan back in the day. I was a oh, huge Onision fan back in the day. Um, yeah, that's your damage. I mean, it's, it's not very fun damage. Look, no, I will defend Tumblr to my dying breath. I never had, like, a drama or a heartache on Tumblr. That only happened, like, more recently, and that was, like, dumb fanfiction drama. But my my childhood on Tumblr was very safe. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, 
But yeah, no, I was I was an Onision fan back in the day. I uh I very much bought into his uh people who self harm are weak mentality. I one hundred percent was in that. Uh, I have a video on that plug somewhere. Blah blah blah. Anyway, <laughs> I'll get the link. Yeah, guys, go and get a Tumblr if you don't have it. It's unironically the best social media right now. Go and get it. <laughs> You know, anyway, we're talking talk about, about Ponda. We're talking about B. <laughs> I mean, I Who's have some questions if you want to get back on track of asking Ponda questions. I've I've still got questions, but uh, do you want to ask yours Go. now, Lumi, or? I mean, they're pretty loaded. Okay, well, I'll I'll get. I have only got like one more main one, so we'll do that, and then we can uh, people in chat can ask, and you can ask. <laughs> chat, this is your uh... formal announcement. If you have questions, prep them now. Uh, okay, so this is a loaded question, B. But relevant, by the way. Yes. By the way, relevant small sidetrack. I just got a DM from Billy saying, uh, and I and I quote, "You leave Tumblr alone." So uh, <laughs> I think mean, Billy's on your side there. Yeah, let's go, Billy. Tumblr is great. Look, it it genuinely is great. Anyway, I'll chill for another time. Uh, okay. So B, knowing everything that you know now, what would you do different in the past ten years? Um. Well, for one thing, if I was going to use Ponder Sprocket as an avatar, she would not be the only one. Like, I would take a whole bunch of my characters and and use a bunch of them, not just her. Um, probably... I, I, I don't know if I want to say I wouldn't do drama videos, because I feel like I would probably still get suckered into that somehow. Well, that's the, that's why we keep saying, it's like, I don't want to be in drama anymore. We all say that, and we all mean it. Yeah. But sometimes, you just see some bullshit. <laughs> I, I think, any if anything, I would like to be more efficient in, like, preparation for channel building stuff. Because, like, I when I originally made the channel... I took a couple weeks aside to build, like, the original Ponder Sprocket assets. They didn't last for very long, and I, I took a couple, however long, to make a whole bunch of new ones, which were better, and then I refined them later on. But, like, yeah, I guess I I would have liked to, to take a little extra time to build the channel as it, I would like it to be now. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. I Yeah. It... Okay. A little bit off topic. On topic, but like going further. One of my favorite, like, I need to sleep and my brain is talking at me fantasies is like imagining going back to being a teenager and knowing everything I know now and just like preemptively building all of my projects. <laughs> just oh, yeah. cheating. Oh, that would be so good. Oh, it would be so good. But then it's like, you'd have to make decisions like, do I still make, for example, the Spock to video? Uh, yeah. Because that was such a pivotal. Honestly, it was a very pivotal thing, not just for you, but also the entire community. And like Moonlit just said in chat, uh, if you weren't there and you didn't do those videos, I wouldn't be here right now doing this. God only knows what I'd be doing. Um, so yeah, there. I guess even though I assume you probably don't think favorably of those videos anymore, just at a guess, um, they still had a very positive impact. Like in the community and on individual people. Yeah, and I guess at this point that is the most I I could hope for is just may maybe I, I don't get exactly what I want out of it, but if I can make a positive impact, that's at least a start. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would say that overall uh, your content, your videos, all that have been a positive. Obviously, I'm biased as shit because I like <laughs> you and I like your content. Uh, but I, I like to believe that they've had a very positive effect on people. Again, I, who is it? I, I've said it. Harley said it. Uh, I think Stream told it to me. Callie's mentioned it. Basically, a whole bunch of the people in our sphere have mentioned you as an influence on their content or inspiration in some variety. Uh <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> the fear of being, of being seen. Blown. Oh my god. <laughs> Perceived. <laughs> I know Harley's like me in the sense that Harley probably wouldn't have made a lot of their videos without you as inspiration, so... Oh yeah, well Harley specifically told me, it was like, oh yeah, you like, stopped me from being a misogynist by oh! saying cunt. <laughs> 
what? I'm going to speak to that child. Apparently <laughs> Harley them. was, was I guess, like, falling down a bit of a misogynist rabbit hole, you know, as, like, teen guys sometimes do. I, I, I've been down that rabbit hole, too. Um, and then came across my video where, I don't know what video, but apparently, it whatever it was, I called somebody a cunt. And Harley was like, oh my god, there's there's a there's a, a person with a vagina calling someone a cunt oh and, god and they, they they don't care and apparently that that made harley less misogynist <laughs> oh god well actually i guess i can kind of see that as well like i don't think it would have taken me down the misogynist path uh but if your videos weren't there to kind of bring a bit more rationality and reason and empathy to a certain degree uh, into commentary, I would have been left more with the the commentary bro side only, and they have a very different uh, ethos, if we will, to content creation. So I could see my content being a lot crueler uh, than it ended up being. So yeah, I could see that. It's like a healthy alternative. Yeah, well, well as healthy as commentary the, the can be. Commentary bros are in essence very similar in essence to um original deviant art review. Mm. They're like which... a mix of that and um oh what were they called back in the day? You know, like your uh, armored skeptics and whatnot. Oh, um anti SJWs. Yeah. Blah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's just like I, I I can't even think of what I was gonna say. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, just not the thoughts out. Not not terribly great to listen to. It's sort of toxic in the in the long run. Just it probably gonna put you in a bad mood. Yeah, well I definitely used to consume a lot of that content when I was younger. Bob and I both kind of fell down that rabbit hole when we were quite young. Um Yeah. Again, it's that I think for young girls especially, it's that whole I I'm not like the other girls. Like they they oh, absolutely. they won't be misogynist towards me. I'm one of the bros, and it's like shut the fuck yeah. up. <laughs> Who was it? Someone recently said to me that I was one of the bros, and I was like, take that fucking back. <laughs> I think it was Jar. <laughs> I think it was Jar. <laughs> I'm like that's a fucking insult. Take that back. <laughs> How dare you? It's like no, I'm not one of the bros. I am a wham and. I have the the tits. <laughs> it, it it's frustrating to me that for a lot of like compliments for younger uh, women from men is diminishing their connection to other women. Yeah, so you're you're not like women. You're like us. And it's yeah. Like, okay, so you're inherently creating an other. Yeah, it, it's like oh, you're better because you're not like fee like you're not female. Is it? Not denying yeah. the gender, but you're not female presenting. <laughs> I don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> um, oh, no. But yeah, I mean, that's that's a whole other topic that I've... God, I could make a video about just that in and of itself. Like, the idea that it's a compliment to say you're not like the other girls. And it's like, um, what? <laughs> anyway. I, I guess in some instances it's like... Because people want to be unique. It's yeah. Like, if you feel like you don't stand out for the crowd, you're probably gonna enjoy somebody saying that you're not like all the other whatever, insert whatever crowd mm. you feel like you blend into. So I can see it to an extent, but also, yeah, I can see mm. your I, I perspective. Especially because so often it's connected to <laughs> you're not like the other girls in regards to girly things or like oh, they're a tomboy, or it's like, oh, you're not like the other girls, you're not shallow, you're not petty. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's very tied into that um, idea of femininity as a negative. You're not a vapid Barbie. Yeah. And, it, oh, I, ooh, I could, I could go on about this for fucking ever. It drives me insane. Especially because I was very deep in it when I was younger. Uh, looking at me now, you wouldn't fucking know it, but I used to actively reject the color pink i couldn't have it oh, anywhere yeah. near me i w pink was not allowed um glitter anything sparkly i wasn't allowed to like memes for some reason bruh i did a full 180 once i once i left high school yeah now look at your hair i'm like it, if it's not <laughs> pink and pastel i don't want it 
I am oh. noting down the questions from the audience, by the way. If you guys ask them in the server, I will still note down your username and everything you ask. All right, um, Hilio. So I am, I am keeping track of them. Well, I have one Please. last little question for me, and then we'll throw it over to you and chat. Uh, this one will end out on a, on a nice one. Uh, what makes you the happiest oh, to create, and what are you aiming to make more of going forward? I would like to make comics going forward. I I want to do the thing that I originally set out to do with my channel, where the channel is like a passive, well, I guess it wouldn't be a passive income type thing, but like I would like the channel to be only one half of my job, and I would like the other half of my job to be creating comic books. Uh, and basically, I want to work towards getting to that point and anything i have to do that well bay i i've been kind of okay this is just me because i keep dragging people into this idea um there's something callie and i've spoken about a ah. bit, bit uh have you considered making like video comics you know oh, like God. um that, a that, little bit like callie like a... stuff that that's that is asking for a whole other set of projects on top of the comics that I already have planned. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that will require like reformatting everything and I am not five down that <laughs> Fair enough. Alright. Fair enough. Lumi, your turn. So somebody else is also typing so I do actually have to keep an eye on the chat. But uh, ponder good news. I do actually have some personal questions for you. Oh god, that's oh, is god. that good news? Fucking loaded. Oh <laughs> no, it's not. They're extremely loaded. Oh, <clears throat> interesting. All right. So first off, in your earlier videos, am I right to say that you were using Adobe Flash to fucking draw? <laughs> yes. No, not what Adobe Flash. It with? was it was Macromedia Flash Pro Eight. So this is and the part of this thing where we judge you, I guess. If you think that's bad, okay, I mentioned this in, a, in an upcoming video where I talk about a bad commission experience, but mm -hmm. if you think that's bad, the way that I used to draw, uh, or the way that I used to specifically shade and highlight things in Flash, and if you've used Flash, you know how dumb this is, um, yeah. what I would do is I would draw solid, like, sections of black for the shadows and solid sections of white for the highlights, I would select the the section, convert it into an object, and oh then my God. blur it. Oh, you hurt me. <laughs> it's uh, so <laughs> it's horrendous. It it is horrendous. I am judging you immensely. Do so it. So later on, I you it. seem to have switched over to Photoshop. Now, as yes. Eclipse Studio user, cringe, glad you switched to the good side of things. Uh, <laughs> any other programs you've used over the years? Uh, paint? <laughs> I, MS Paint I've or been... like the new paint? <laughs> MS Paint. I have been very, uh, very yes. limited in the programs that I have used. Mostly because like, I, like the reason I had Macromedia Flash was because it was an old copy of a program copy that mm. uh i'd gotten from my parents business because they ran like a business that gave me access to certain programs so i just like grabbed a copy from them and then at That's some true. point someone else gave me a copy of photoshop and i was like oh i guess i'll use this for a bit and i used it up until i couldn't anymore and then i mm. st that's effectively when i started using uh flash yeah, I'm still judging you very much so, especially for the shading. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. It, it, I okay. don't I work in... For it. <laughs> I don't work with Micromedia Flash. I never worked with any kind of software like that. Uh, but my friend does. Uh, my friend is a professional animator, and I've seen their struggles. So... <laughs> <laughs> Although, I, I have noticed, like, you do have skill when it comes to animation. Is it something you actually enjoy doing? Like, animating? Oh, um... <laughs> yeah, I was, I was literally animating night <laughs> why don't you look at that i called you out I, I was i was teaching myself how to animate on clip studio paint finally getting around to that i've been putting oh, it off God. forever do you have uh, x or pro uh i don't remember it's at the top of your thing uh i don't i don't have it open right now 
Yeah, uh, because Pro limits you to how many layers, not layers, uh, how many frames you can use with X dozen, so that's why I'm asking. I want to say I have X, but don't trust me. Based. Same. Alright, so while we're at it, what's your go-to resolution for your art? Any favorite brushes? Uh, uh <laughs> the default uh g pen i i uh -huh. i do not experiment with brushes very often i'm doing it a little more now but uh generally if i'm using if i'm using brushes it's probably going to be the cleanest most mm -hmm. like akin to comic book ink brush that i can find and currently yeah. that for me is the g pen on clip studio yeah I mean, personally, uh, the turnip pen is my go-to if I'm doing clean lines, but I'm also not really working with comic styles, so I kind of get it. Yeah. Um, so here's a more loaded question, though. So. I've also noticed that you sometimes shift the colors in Ponder Sprocket sprites to suit the holiday season, like, of when the video is being edited. <laughs> yeah. That's why we have like, <laughs> Halloween Ponder Sprocket in, like, fucking March. Yeah. Uh, was that a spur-of-the-moment decision? Also, I'm sorry for the dog barking, it's my dog outside. Uh, was that a spur of the moment thing, or was this something you actually like originally wanted to do from the get go when you made the sprites for the character? Like, oh yeah, or... like wonder. Well, not from the get go because when I originally mm -hmm. started doing commentaries, I only thought that I was going to do it for like a year, maybe two oh. max, and then I would get eventually bored and move on to something else. Uh, it's <laughs> it's why I originally didn't connect my commentary channel to my deviant art because. I didn't mm. think that I would be around. I didn't think that I would be... I, I didn't think I was ever going to clear 500 subscribers. Well, uh, look at you now. Yeah, I, I did not think that I was going to be around long enough to... Mm. That it would, like, make sense to direct people to my stuff because I did not think that I would have fans. And then, like, yeah. as I started making more content, every once in a while I'd be like, oh, I want to do sprite for a ponder sprocket or i'd be like oh i, I kind of wish i had like sprites that were a little more seasonal and then i would just sort of recolor them because i i don't have enough time to just give her a whole yeah. new outfit that was supposed to be what i was working on before i i decided to opt out of using her as a character yeah uh so going off of that uh this is actually a bit of a funny question uh with Actually, the question just slipped my mind. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I thought you had it written uh, down. No, not that one. Oh, those rude. are mine. Oh, yeah. rude. I hate to break it to you. I don't write everything down. I'm not a commentator. <laughs> Fair. However, I do have the audience questions written down. So, hey. So let's move okay. on to that, shall we? Okay. Yeah. All right. So Alan does art and stuff. Asked. I know Mally would participate in fanzines, but what about about you, like you yourself? And they're also asking for my opinion on it. But I'm gonna let you go first about it because B is B comes before L. So <laughs> uh, I've so considered it, but mm -hmm. um, I I can't rely on my mental health enough to like have the confidence in myself to finish something like oh, that. That's so I, I I already have so much difficulty like trying to over please people by taking on these giant pro projects for myself that just like mm. makes everything drag out and I feel really bad about it. Um yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't think that's that'd fair. be a great idea to apply to other situations. Honestly, I think that's fair. Knowing your limits is like the best because you're like, yeah. okay, I'm not gonna be able to do it. There's no point in me trying. Yeah, um basically. now for my answer uh i don't have fucking time my free time is spent doing commissions like i i have applied to do stuff before like surprise nobody knows this but i'm actually pretty all right animation and i have actually applied to animated maps before but then i would back out because i'd be like i have everything storyboarded i have it ready and then i just end up getting anxiety i'm like no thanks <laughs> yeah. so i just withdraw um so another question from Alan does art and stuff. Have any of you participate in a queer event? Ask him because I'm going to a queer city festival tomorrow. Um, I'm guessing pride or something. 
I'm sure at least once I have, but it's nothing's <laughs> coming to mind. I'm not very. I don't socialize. The only queer oh! <laughs> event I partake in is being queer. Yeah. <laughs> I fair. don't go outside. I've gone to a few pride events, but I always end up going home early because people get really weird. See, I almost <laughs> went to Pride in Sydney uh, with Barb, except uh, we had gotten so drunk like the day before that I just went to bed instead. Oh, fuck's sake. That is fair. Jesus. Look, when I'm like, with Barb, we uh... go hard. <laughs> like, one time, uh, myself and a group of friends went, and we were teenagers, like, we were under 18. And a guy proceeded to get completely undressed, and oh. we just immediately fucked out of there. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. That's what I mean when I said things get too wild. It's shit like that. And I've just been hesitant to go now because being trans, I'm not out IRL. IRL, I'm perceived as a lesbian, and I feel a bit like a fraud. <laughs> oh, because I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> like, I even changed my wallpaper. It used to be a lesbian flag, and I just kind of just very quietly changed it, and everyone's been asking me, where's my gay pride? <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's like <laughs> I'm about to drop a nuke. <laughs> All right, so Lyo asked, <laughs> and Melly's oh gonna hate this question. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> so Lyo asks, "Do you think Scrutus would win against a gray <laughs> oh, kangaroo?" No. Scrutus would win against a what? A kangaroo. A gray kangaroo. A gray kangaroo oh. specifically. He specified no. gray. No, well, no. Scrutus exactly. <laughs> We had this, okay, B, before you got here, we've <laughs> argued about this with Scritus for like a solid hour. Scritus is convinced that he could beat a kangaroo in a fist fight. Well, oh, of fucking course he is. <laughs> He's gonna get his ass beat. <laughs> I'm glad you know more about animals than Scritus. Oh, poor <laughs> guys. Scritus was just minding his own business at this point. Lion didn't have to do him like that. <laughs> Listen, I've seen those I am reading fuckers. out. <laughs> Listen, I'm reading out all the questions, Mally. I'm not discriminating here. Anyways, uh, Lin Lin asked, Hey Ponder, you owe me a fight. Time and place? Uh, behind the Taco Bell? Okay. Midnight. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, don't, don't beat the child. Oh, right. Lin -Lin oh, no, 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 no. We'll plan it for VidCon next year, and then there won't be a child anymore. You can beat the shit out of them. Like, I beat Holly. I could also, I could also just conveniently forget my ID at home, and then everyone... <laughs> can, yeah, you everyone would just younger than them. Too, everyone will just think it's two 18-year-olds duking it out. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you look so young? What the fuck? It's so weird. I know. Fucking this, Child this finish line is just like, yeah, I thought you were just a <laughs> hyperactive 15-year-old Naruto running. Just uh, uh, Oh my fucking uh, god, stop. I used uh, to do that when uh, I was younger. <laughs> yeah, Scrutus actually thought you were a kid. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Alright, next question. So this is from They Call Me by Snow. That is actually their username. Snow, please fucking fix your username. I will fucking slap you. And they asked, I do want clarification. How does Ponder view their Spectre videos after everything? Uh, well, this is loaded. Yeah. Much like many things in my life, I have very confused emotions on it, and I don't know how to properly address them. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of I mean, it is just like, did I do the right thing? Oh god, did I do the right thing? Well, I'll answer that for you. The answer is yes. Because the information that you had at the time, and everything you did, was the best that you could do with what you had. And if it turned out later talking. down the line, someone did something shitty or turned out to be a piece of garbage, that's not your fault. I am repeating what Lyo has said to me. <laughs> yeah, Mally, you guys keep talking, I'm gonna take a hit. What? Oh, fucking damn it, Lenny. <laughs> what? I- do you really think I can do this sober? <laughs> you don't do anything sober as far as I can tell. We can hear you taking There's a, a joke hit. I can make here, but there is minors in chat. I don't know what you're talking about! <laughs> to clarify my- this is Scritus talking about mistaking you for a child. To clarify my comment, I thought you were some sort of 13-year-old dream stand that had too much caffeine when you Naruto ran across me in stream. <laughs> and I had never seen you before. <laughs> 
I wasn't Naruto running. I was just running. <laughs> Confirmed. Uh. B just naturally Naruto runs. Okay. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> that was a good hit. B, would you partake of the wed with me? Although I'm not doing weed, I'm doing a mix of things. Why do you think I'm coughing? Am I the only <laughs> one not with the good kush right now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to have the good kush in Australia. <coughs> I'm not either. I'm getting around the rules. Oh. Don't right. encourage them, Lumi. Uh, anyone under 18, do not smoke the good kush. Anyone who is over 18, do not smoke the good kush. I need to buy it from somewhere, and if you buy out the stocks, I'm not going to be able to buy it. Anyways. I would actually say if you're below 24 or 25, do not smoke the good kush. Let your brain finish Shut the finish fuck up, I'm 23. Let your brain finish cooking! Okay, uh, consider. I don't need to. I already have people IRL asking me, like, wait, you're not 28? Wait, you're not 25? It's like, huh? That that's not... It's what? annoying. I want to be <laughs> immature. Let me stop maturing. At least Scr Scritus is doubling down on beating a, a Joey, so... Eh. <laughs> of course. You know is. what, Scritus, I'll, I'll hand you that. I think that you could beat a baby in a fight. There you go. <laughs> Keep Congratulations. Alright, so Echo Chamber. Uh, so they actually changed their question. Originally the question was, where's those five llama badges you owe me? It's been seven years. What? Um, but then... I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it's a ponder. I don't fucking know. The and then yeah. she changed it to, do you fear being replaced by Skynet? I mean AI tune. AI tunes, wow, well, AI tools. You can tell I'm high. Um... <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but I feel like by that point, it, if if we're at the point where, like, AI is able to, I don't know, like, replicate my videos or whatever, I'm probably hmm. also technologically at the point where I can just, like, talk in front of a webcam or whatever and have one of the YouTuber avatars put together. So, in general, I feel like it's sort of a... It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like an arms race with content. I'm not afraid of being replaced by AI. I'm afraid that AI will not want to date me. <laughs> yeah. So, counterpoint, what, you, you just... don't have to worry. Mally has to worry, because Mally cannot draw hands. Uh, well, neither can the AI! Hands. Exactly, so Mally can be replaced. You and me, on the other hand, uh, be we're fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, are we just gonna let B hands. slide with the dating AI, but I'm not allowed to be a monster fucker? Mally, no offense. Uh, you know, fuck it, I'm putting you on blast. You voted Smash on Resident Evil monsters. Shut up. And I'll up. do it again. I'll, any day would, of the that's week. Why I hate but but uh, I would also anyway. smash Resident Evil monsters. Exactly. Ah, <sighs> fucking monster fuckers. Anyway. B, B yeah, had a higher idea. smash count than I did on Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, unironically, like, I asked that one classmate that you know about Mal about that shit, and she literally looked at me and went, good taste, smash, and I just, I lost faith in humanity that day. <laughs> Stop kink shit. Look, Renbu, everyone would smash Mothman. Come on, it's Mothman. Pass. I'm straight. Fuck off, Lumi. I'm straight. Women. <sighs> Anyways, oh. uh... <laughs> Listen, women are fucking amazing. Anyways, uh, Deficient Sim. asks, what are her thoughts on the first Spongebob movie? Uh, what happened to the first Spongebob movie? I have no- don't they sing that song? I've never seen it. Never you know, the that. one- the song? That one song? The Goober song? Uh, goofy Goober? From a Goofy Goober? Yeah. I don't know anything else about the movie. I don't- <laughs> actually think I saw the first Spongebob. I, I don't no think I've idea seen any I've seen Spongebob it. movie. Unironically, <laughs> Deep Lumi Lord, the only reason I even know this song is because of an animation. Uh, fucking Ginger Ninja Oh Whoa. That's how you say the name. I don't care what Ray says. They are wrong. It's O W. It's not O-W-O. It's Oh Whoa. Uh, <laughs> like, they made an animation with an ex-friend celebrating oh, their yeah. friendship and that's how I fucking found that. <laughs> I do love their content. Their stuff's really good. Oh yeah, Ray Ray does some really good shit. But not sorry, not Ray. Uh, their name is now June. Um, 
Let's see. So then Dr. Kin Hone Kappa, that is how their name is spelled in here, asks, would Ponder want to be friends on games? I'm guessing like Switch and all that shit. Wait, Was sorry, like repeat a friend that? code? I don't know. I guess. Do you have a Switch Ponder? Oh, yes. I mean, I don't think people just give that out, do they? I I don't my my, fr don't. my friends don't even have my friend code. <laughs> I don't socialize. You think I play with people? <laughs> Bruh. The cackle. <laughs> it's okay, V. It's okay. I don't. She even have like Switch, V hasn't so even added me. <laughs> I've been two years. I, I I play MMORPGs solo, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> You know, I can't even judge you. I have literally sat down and played Sea of Thieves on my own. I can't judge. <laughs> like, <laughs> earlier in this stream, I'm like saying to Scrinis on the horror SMP, go away, go away. And he's like, you're going to play single player on a multiplayer server. Yes. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Added you back yet? On what? Oh, on Switch. Wait, you added me on Switch? Two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've touched my Switch in like two years. Dude, no, no, me. that's that's untrue. I've been playing Breath of the Wild. Sort of. I, I sort I, of. I haven't touched it since. I haven't touched it since before VidCon. Ah. All right. So Moonlit Butterfly Effect asked, "Hey Ponder, and I am not about to yell the capital letters because, quite frankly, I'm way too mellowed out. Do you know how many people are fucking terrified of you?" And then meet you and like chill out and note you are the big, the stoner big sister they never had. I do not get those vibes from you at all. Okay, I don't get it. <laughs> so this is actually fucking hilarious because in high school, um, I, I had a nickname, and in high school my nickname was the scary goth bitch in the boots and sunglasses. Is that a nickname? Oh my. That's what that's what a lot of people apparently knew me by. They didn't know me by my name. They knew me as the scary goth bitch in the boots and sunglasses. You know what? That's that's kind of fair. So, and everyone hydrate. Everyone was like afraid of me. People wouldn't approach me. <laughs> Fucking, you know, Columbine shooter blah 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 type vibes. Jesus. But, yeah, Vincent's right. That's not a nickname. That's a title. So my 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 thought process is, you know, like, oh, I'm less I should be less scary online. And then, you know, commentaries happen and then everybody was like, "Oh my god, you're fucking terrifying." And now they're just not terrified of me in real life because they have this this notion that I'm like big scary internet squid mama. And then they see me in real life and they're like, "I could I could flick you and your jaw would dislocate." I mean, uh, if it stream, makes you feel I definitely better, am give... insane. We've only hit 15 hours. I've got a ways to go. <laughs> God. Uh, I mean, B, if it makes you feel better, you do not give big sister energy. You give immense, like, chaotic younger sibling who starts shit on purpose and then gets the older sibling to take the blame energy. I, If we're doing by sibling vibes, it's got to be big Swiss sister or, like, twin vibes because <laughs> well, they, they specifically said older sister stoner vibes. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling. I'm telling the high story again. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling the again, drug story. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, as an older sibling, that is not the vibe I'm getting. Who's this sassy I, lost child? That's also pretty accurate. As the <laughs> older sibling, who up until recently was like the punching bag for one of the younger siblings, I, I, I don't even know how I feel about that. <laughs> But I mean, Sorry, okay, fam. okay. You just you give younger oh, sibling strange. energy to me. <laughs> we were chatting about how you and B both have gremlin energy earlier. It's powerful. Okay, yeah. but here's the thing: B definitely does give off a little bit of the big sister vibes because at VidCon, at, <laughs> at VidCon, we were at the the Turkey Tom party, and my dumbass took an edible. I had never, I I would not <laughs> had one of those before. It was like a gummy. Uh, and I didn't know what was happening. Long, long story short, I had a very bad trip. <laughs> and my first instinct was to look over at B and just text her aggressively. Just B, 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 help. help. Yeah. 
<laughs> help me be and she wasn't looking at her phone so she couldn't see my messages so i'm sorry <laughs> so in my in my inebriated state i thought i'll just call her and that'll force her to look at her phone not thinking that stream is sitting right next to her so, <laughs> so the phone rings and stream looks over at me because we're yeah. sitting around the same table she's like mally why are you calling b you're right here <laughs> And I'm just like panicking. I, <laughs> I mean, abort, abort, I've, abort, abort mission. I've said this, I've said this multiple times, and I'll keep saying it. Good on you for knowing that you needed help. Well, the thing is, I was like, B knows what no to do. For this. What's I was like, B knows what to do. B B knows drugs. Mm. B will help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then you, you go somewhere. You go somewhere out in the open mm. where you don't mind if you barf, uh, because. Yeah. If you barf, if you barf in someone else's house and you're already having a bad high and you're feeling anxiety and paranoia, that is the worst fucking thing that could oh, possibly yeah. happen. Ooh. Uh, so you want to get obviously you want to be outside, you want to be off property, and then you want to go someplace where you can just vibe and be happy. And for us, that was the B and B, and that was Gravity Falls <laughs> because I. I have spoken with uh, Harley since that, but I, I have very poor memory of a lot of what happened because people kept teleporting around me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when I pulled you, I don't actually remember what I said to you because I was so scared to say anything. Um, oh. But I, I must have gotten the message across because you got it pretty much right away and you're like, okay, okay, it's all right, I'll get you an Uber. You were just immediately on it. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I remember you asking, like, really gently. You were just like, what do you want to watch? What do you like? I was like, I was like you going to comfort. cry. And I was like, Gravity Falls. And my literal only thought process was Stanley Pine, Stanley Pine, Stanley Pine. Of course, of course you absolute fucking... I need my husband, please. I need, I need the elderly man. Oh my fucking god. The older and more like mentally unwell, the more interested she is, I swear to god. <laughs> All right. But Next B, B question. just took care of me, and I'm just saying that was nice. <laughs> oh no, I just got something in DMs relating to you. Do I even want to look? <laughs> I'm I'm not sending that to Mally. <laughs> do what you can. Full on picture of my butthole. Uh, oh, don't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. So oh, just wait. By by the way, chat. We'll we'll accept right. any and all fan art to do with Stanley Pines, but just just throwing that out there. No, no, ignore me, ignore Jesus me. Fucking Christ. Okay, chat. <laughs> Mally is the type to reading fucking reader X Stanley Pines. I, I am. Things, I right? am. I totally am. No I shame. I I'll I write clocked it. Clocked you. No, unironically, I have clocked her as the type to fucking do that shit before she was open about it. <laughs> I've always been open about it. No, 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 like, Mally, you cannot deny this. I have clocked you as being certain things without you even giving me any I'm, sliver of a hint towards it. I'm opening it. up unsettling. a Google Doc right now. I'm I'm opening up the reader slash Stanley Google Doc right this second. Oh my god. Oh it's my happening. God. Anyway, ignore me. Oh, <laughs> Please continue. Oh no. You know what, Billy? I'm reading this. <laughs> Fucking old mentally, old mentally ill men I'm in. Wait, Mally likes capitalists? Cringe. <laughs> Oi! Now, now listen here. Stanley Pines is not a capitalist. He's a con artist. It's different. <laughs> That's capitalist. Anyways. So, 24 Casey. I already read out your username, but I'm going to do it again. And they ask, what's your favorite type of art style or genre? Example, hype pop, surrealism, or semi-realistic anime? Ooh. Hmm. Uh, that's charged. Yeah. Mm. I kind of like hyper stylized anime, or at least like shiny anime. Does that make sense? With your style, yes. <laughs> Mally, unironically, some of the highlights you put on things are literally just white. Yeah, I think it's kind of obvious. I like, I like shiny. Hmm. What about you, B? Wait, what was the question again? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Put the cush away. What's your favorite type of art style or genre? Example, hype pop or hyper pop. I, mean, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, surrealism no, no, no. or semi realistic anime or semi realistic, depending on where you're from. I, I'm going to be real. I hate questions like this because <laughs> the, the thing is like way too broad. I like, I, mm. I don't have a favorite art style. Like, so many. 
I, I can grow to love a style if it's if it's got like a, a story that I love and then once I see mm. it in a different art style even if it's the same story because I've gotten used to the one that it was originally told in it's going to be weird I, I I don't have a fave for it like there are just there are aspects of different ones that work and those ones I apply to my own style yeah like I personally don't have a favorite art style. I have aspects of styles that I like, and I actually try to incorporate that into my style. Like, I love stylized anatomy that still borders on realistic, where if you were to put it against a real person, it would not line up. But if it stands on its own, you can still, like, see, like, yeah, this is meant to be somebody who uh, is meant to look this specific way. I, I love yeah. those kind of styles. And there's it's a very broad spectrum when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, I love experimentation with lines. Like, holy shit, doing straight lines, like clean lines, easiest shit to me. I've stopped doing it because of how boring it is, and I've started doing more textured lines, and that's made art a bit more fun to me. And I love when other people do that as well. Like, I've seen mm -hmm. people who do really bright colored lines for their art, and then they have, like, muted colors for the character, and I think that looks really neat, but it's not something that would work with my style, for example. So I wouldn't yeah. incorporate it myself. Well, I mean, it's yeah, things like, like you can see stuff you really, really like, but it doesn't mean that you're mm -hmm. going to try and include it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, like to give a good example, like, I love the fact that Mally is able to incorporate so many textures into our art. Mm. It really pop makes it pop out. With Yubi, for example, I fucking love the way you approach lines. I love it. It, it just clicks the little thing in my brain, like, yeah, this are, those are nice lines. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna actually like say like there there are some instances where I'll like somebody's art mm. and they've got like they they use like the like the really fine mm. like the midi pen or something like something where mm. there's there's no change in line weight and it, it looks like almost like an animation or maybe they color their mm -hmm. lines and I've I've tried that stuff in the past and every once in a while I will experiment with it but mm -hmm. God, I I miss line weight <laughs> when I'm when I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm about to like we we're having a nice, lovely, wholesome conversation. I'm about to ruin that. B. Before you do. Okay, yes. Before you do. Uh Billy just messaged me. Everybody hydrate, stretch, and relax jaws, and I think that's relevant to me. Yeah, no. And you're I've already right. started hydrating, so. Well, I, I got a cup of tea and I made sure to stretch a bunch because oh my god, 15 hours. Okay. Okay. What about you, B? I Jesus got water. Stretching. <laughs> well, the hydration is so important. All right, B. Wait, let me snap but go my jaw. Within within your model uh, for this for this therapy session, I have included tangent lines in many places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can see one where the uh, when I'm not talking, the end of the finger of one hand connects directly <laughs> to the. The, the line of the arm i kind of i kind oh, of yeah. had this thought in my head i'm like what if i i just include as many of these as i can in subtle ways and see if it distracts her at some point <laughs> just like progressively try to piss me off <laughs> well just oh, i was thinking about the the six minutes we have ripping into that ai cover for vidcon and it's just it it lives rent free in my head i haven't been able to edit it at all because i love it so much <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly I love uh, seeing the fucking picture with the notes that you wrote down B I, I, I genuinely thought it was the funniest shit <laughs> I would do the same thing I have done the same thing I wouldn't be doing it to AI art though uh, I've done it to like advertisements or advertisements depending where you're from uh, where I would just sit down with someone and be like this looks like shit and I'd just be fucking circling it like this is not right <laughs> shit like that I mean in fairness we are still assuming that it's yeah. AI art. Yeah, I mean, I'm like 98% no sure. Yeah. Yeah, everything <laughs> points to it. The inconsistencies. The, the fact tangents. there's no credit to the artist anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alright, so next question comes from Fluffy Panda, and they ask, what would the best app to... Blah, Jesus. What would the best app be to network with people or and or even uh, just to make friends nowadays. Ooh, that's hard. Um, it's I, called real life. Step outside. I feel the Let need me, to reiterate that I do not socialize. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, am not the one to ask. 
Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. It, especially if you're talking about like online platforms, it's so hard to say. Uh, a lot of the time, friendships that form online, they form out of uh, mutual interest. So like, you can't really go into a setting being like, I'm looking for friends because people will either pick up on that or you just say it. And it turns people off really quickly. Like, I've had people come into my DMs a number of times now and basically st either say it outright or imply like, oh, I want to be friends. And it never, it immediately turns me off. But people who come and chat to me about a shared interest or something, I'm more likely, you know, to respond to that. Uh, so if you're making something or you're participating in a fandom, uh, it, it kind of just happens naturally over time. <laughs> uh, two things. Mally, first, do you want to be friends? No, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second, unironically, the one thing that's worked for me, and I wish it fucking didn't, because this is genuinely awkward, because I've had to shoot people down, like, hey man, we're not friends, or I've had to ghost people. It's just being me. I'm unapproachable as fuck. And then people are like, no, you're really, you're really nice. You're really approachable. It's like, no, I just have manners. Leave me alone. <laughs> I don't fuck see. Off. Here's the thing though. I don't actually remember how Lumi and I met or became friends, friends, friendly. I, I know. Lumi kind of just like appeared in my life at one point and I just kind of accepted I, that he's here I now. I can tell you exactly what happened. Please do, because I have no concept of how friend. this happened. <laughs> I showed up in your chat and I picked on you and for some fucking reason you were like, oh, do you want mod? And my first response was, no, that's a responsibility. But then somebody <laughs> kept spamming Susie's docs and I was like, Mally, give me admin now. <laughs> so and it was because I was I scuffed, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, unironically, I started joining your streams under the word, whoa. And then he just like clicked with it. And then we started talking, and I still remember it was a stream, and I was still unsure. I thought we were just acquaintances, and then you referred to me as a friend, and I'm like, "We're friends." And he's like, "We're not." <laughs> oh, <laughs> yikes! <laughs> See, I and I have no memory day. of any of this. To me, it was just there is like a post Lumi world, and then Lumi was just there. It's like you know those cryptids that insert themselves into people's minds with false memories, and it's just like they were always there. It, that's what Lumi is to me. No, yeah. I makes mean sense. if it makes uh, you know what, I'm gonna pull out something that happened in DMs recently, which I think is kind of funny. We kind of sat down and we declared our friendship because we we were like, yeah, no, we're friends now, yeah, like literally like this week. <laughs> Mind you, I saw Mally as a friend. Up until that point, and I think it was mutual. But yeah, like, this was like the official, official thing. <laughs> yeah, we made it mind. official. Like, I've gone. <laughs> the like, ink I've is dry. To about personal shit. She's come to me about personal shit. Like we've talked, we've had personal chats. Uh, but like we kind of just in the middle of it. I think I just kind of brought it up out of nowhere. Like I was unsure if we were friends, and you brought it up on stream, and you're like, "Oh, I don't remember that." <laughs> yeah, I have no memory of it, but I, I, it sounds like a thing I would do. But I mean, it is hard yeah. to say, though, isn't it? Like. You're never no. quite sure when to call it because, like, even if yeah, you okay. think of them as a friend, you don't know if it's mutual and it's kind of yeah. awkward just to ask. And yeah, you don't know yeah. when to call it. I mean, the best way I can describe it is like, uh, I literally just showed up and was like, hi. And, and then <laughs> you were just like, oh, you bully me. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's friendship. You're not, simping. You're not simping for me. Hi. <laughs> I do kind of admit that people tend to, um, I can't really offer advice on making friends because I don't know how I got most of mine. Um, people tend to arrive somewhere, I don't know where or when, and then they're just Hi. part of life. Sunny's a bit like yeah. that too, actually. Um, oh, how did, I how did we in. get... Yeah, I was going to say, how did we get Sunny? Because... Oh, uh, Sunny mentioned being a fan of yours, and I was like, oh, I talked to Mally. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Lumi. <laughs> And and they were like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, look. And I I think I got you into a VC. That's and said, right. Sunny. You asked me, I remember like, oh, this, God. yeah. You asked me, you're like, hey, I've got a fan of yours. Can you come and say hi to them? I want to I wanna bully yeah. them. I want to scare them. I, I thought you were joking. I thought, no. I thought it was going to be like a lol, you thought you had fans thing. I, I thought that's what you were setting me up no. for. So I jumped in and said hi. And I think Sunny screamed? What was it? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> like the thing is, I love doing it to people because okay, uh, funny thing that people don't know about me unless they've spoken to me personally. I never got to experience the fanboy joy. I never got it's that trash. with anyone. Fanboy like, joy is so good though. I've never had that. Like, fucking hell. I like Ponder's content. I like your content. But like, Ponder, oh. we haven't spoken officially before. And I'm not really losing my shit that we're in a chat. <laughs> we're just vibing. We just we like, vibing. I can say shit like that. And Chill time. I don't know. I'm weird like that. Yeah. And then Sunny mentioned making music for you. What's up, boy? And I was like, oh. I mean, I can tell it to Mally, and Mally, you were immediately on top of me, like, oh my god, yes! And well, yeah, then I was so like, cool. hey, would you be okay with me chucking Mally into your, not Mally, fucking, uh, Sunny into your SMP? And you were like, yeah, sure. And Sunny, I have it recorded, and I sent <laughs> you the recording, because I, I got consent from Sunny to do it, by the way. So, none of that. Uh, <laughs> where I just sent Sunny the, the fucking <laughs> link to the server, and said, hey, Sunny, guess what? And I sent them, they're like, oh my god! And then they became the best character on the SMP. I don't take fatigue. I love Jester. But I think... Yeah. Actually, no, I think that still ties into what I was saying before with, like, shared interest mm -hmm. and whatnot. And how it's a little bit easier to connect with other creators and creative people. Where It's like, yeah, because Sunny... Uh, my first memories of Sunny is talking about music and, like, their interest yeah. in the SMP and that. So it's like, we had a shared interest in the SMP. And mm. Sunny was creating things. And... It just it becomes so much easier to connect with people when they they share those interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, then I was great. only just now. Yeah, I only just now saw Lyo's thing where he says, "Poor Lumi," because when he tries to have a friend conversation with him, uh, it never works out. I point to the my Sona has no backstory combo. Well, yeah, Lyo <laughs> is impossible to have friendly conversations with. Because, Mally, you fucking know this. I love asking about people's OCs. I love asking pe about design shit. I like, mm, I like mm. chucking ideas at people. Like, I've done this with you. Mm. Lyo is impossible for that. Because this old fucking boomer has <laughs> no story for his character. Like, even my, like, Jesus Christ. Just my little Sona, angst. like, the cat. He doesn't have any angst in his life because he's meant to be a Sona. But, like, he eats toxic leaves and drinks fucking lighter fluid for fun. There you go. That sounds <laughs> so about pizzazz. right. Unironically, I've made it canon. You know those Halloween pictures I do where it's like glowy as fuck? He just yeah. drinks fucking- you know those <laughs> light sticks that you crack? He just oh, drinks yeah. that, and that's how he goes. <laughs> that's cool. the canonical explanation for him. It doesn't seem healthy. <laughs> oh yeah, Billy uh, also said, I remember that, Sunny lost her shit. Yeah, <laughs> Billy was there. Aww. Sunny's- just, well, I, oh, what was it? Sunny said something to me recently where they were like, reminding me that they were a fan and i was like stop that your friend <laughs> it's different <laughs> it's different now stop it. Stop Get it. Some help. <laughs> it's just it's weird oh, because no. i'm like a fan of most of my friends at this point it i don't know it it's a weird dynamic but so far it's working out okay <laughs> fast forward a year from now when everything's on fire we all kill each other at vidcon <laughs> like I'm looking at the chat and Renbo, let me be honest, I am not fun to chat about character stuff with because holy shit, if you're a friend of mine and I see something is fucked, I'm pointing it out. I am yeah. the fucker who dishes out constructive criticism. I will tell you something's but fucked meanly. and I'll point it out and I'll fix it. No, I fucking don't. Not meanly. Meanly to and me. And then Nikki. No. 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 I only point out your fucked up hands. Mainly. Everything else has been constructive. Like, here, Mainly. I'm so confident that. Point out one example of me giving you criticism and advice on how to fix it where it's mean that isn't hands. That isn't hands. Yeah, specifically that isn't hands. <laughs> That's my go-to thing for bullying her, okay? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The one thing. Also, uh, shout out to the fact uh, of Nikki going, Lumi sucks, don't be fooled. That's true. And then, dude, I cannot send Lumi art without me giving me anatomy criticism. Well, that's the thing. Nikki, I, do you I really have, want um, me to get into that on stream? Oh, God. Well, that's the thing. I know that, <laughs> B, you like have a pretty keen focus on anatomy. I know Lumi does. And then my friend Yask, so many times she will not draw unless the anatomy is perfect. Mm. Uh, her drawings are fantastic, and I have to like bully her to share them. 
So it is like agonizing for her whenever I send her something. It's just like, okay, there is no anatomy here at all. And also, why is everything a gradient? And I'm like, yeah, it's my style. <laughs> you can't critique me. It's my style. <laughs> my backward Listen, hands it... are a choice. Listen, uh, if we're talking Mally style, if it's not scuffed, it's not Mally. That's if it. it's not scuffed, it's not on brand. Exactly. Uh, uh, where do you ask Mickey... questions? Either in this chat or in the Discord. Either is fine. Oh my god, Nikki, I wasn't gonna say the name of you fucking... <laughs> Spoosy? I am not explaining it. <laughs> uh, basically, TLDR, Nikki sent me something and I immediately went, that's wrong. That's like completely flipped around. <laughs> that's how you're meant to do it. <laughs> that's the best summarized explanation I can give. Uh, and yeah, Snow... <laughs> Snow and Chet just... Also, they jab at you constantly when you try and talk about it. Thanks, Wu. This is now the call-out am... Lumi hour. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, tough shit, Nikki. If I care, I care enough for your shit to look good. Alright. All right, next. Next question is from Likos, which was, Was there a point your reputation preceded you so much that made you laugh? And Likos is actually willing um, to give examples of that, which I think the Frenchie is still listening. And if you are, uh, bonjour, how's that baguette? <laughs> <laughs> to Did be fair, I'm actually one? friends with Likos, so <laughs> that's why I can get away with it. <laughs> Shut up, Nikki. You're Croatian. You're literally a Slav. I get to point funny. Okay. You know let them cook. Uh, B, do you have an example of of that? Uh, I. Mom, to read again. I'm, I'm just. I forget. Uh, well, I, I could give you an example of one I had, if that helps. Yes. So yes, my yes. one that will always stick with me is the first time that, uh, I guess I was recognized in public. I guess technically, uh, which is funny because I am. 2D. Uh, yeah. So, because I do conventions here in Australia, so I sell my wares, um, I was doing a convention one day and someone hit me up on Instagram going, oh, I really want to grab some of your stuff at the convention. Like, I'm I'm tabling here too. I was like, oh, cool, we can link up and I'll go see your table and this, like, you know, convention stuff. And yeah, I yeah. met that person and we were chatting for a little while and they bought some stuff and it was really, really nice. And then they paused and they looked at me for a minute and they looked really guilty and they're like, so... I actually found you through your Hopeless Peaches video. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> actually. It was, and it was right after the second video had dropped. So I had like 5k f subscribers at that point or something. So it really just kicked me in the in the nuts, that one. I still wow. I still see that person sometimes. We uh, She's a regular tabling around uh, New South Wales. Uh, and I think sometimes in ACT as well. Uh, so I actually, I see her table very frequently because she's one of the few artists that uh, regularly table in New South Wales that has like Dream SMP stuff. So I always stop by there, by their table to see what they're doing. Mm. Actually, funny thing relating to that. Uh, at the bus station, I did actually have a moment where I saw somebody watching one of Aaron's videos, <laughs> Hopeless Peaches for those who don't know. And <laughs> Mally knows this story. <laughs> I looked over their shoulder and they're like, hi. And I was like, hey, what you watching? They're like, oh, yeah, it's Hopeless Peaches person. I was like, oh, they sound like a twat. <laughs> I walked over. <laughs> Lumi chooses violence every time. Which, for context, if this person watches watches Aaron's stuff enough, I have voiced Spockter in the video. So <laughs> just, if they see me again, they will know that I am the cat. It is a little <laughs> wild, though, like seeing people. It in the wild, in their natural habitat, watching like either your content or someone you know's content, it's it's yeah. very odd. It's a very weird feeling. Thankfully, I mean... I've never run into that. The closest thing was somebody came on my DeviantArt and was just like, why are you reposting Ponder Sprocket's thumbnails? <laughs> and then they, they responded to Actually... their own comment and then they were like, wait a minute! <laughs> Oh, Wait, oh, I've got B. an even funnier one. Oh, go ahead, Lumi. B, that's the question I was going to ask you earlier. <laughs> Do people come to your fucking 
like <laughs> TA asking if you've caught beef ponders from it. <laughs> it's happened at least once. God. Oh no. I oh, I've God. I've had that happen with a like with a friend. It happened with um uh that that that, that, that. oh my god Phineas. <laughs> That was so funny. So uh, I did that fucking awful cover of um, your new boyfriend uh, on my on my Mouse and Macarons channel, and obviously I just shared it on Twitter as you do, and uh, I retweeted it on the uh, Mally Malware one because I tend to you know cross that platform a little bit. And Phineas comments on it with, "My friend Mally Malware gave you a shout out. This is gonna blow." Up. And I'm just like Phineas, <laughs> Phineas, my beloved. Oh, it's me. The call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> Actually, Mally, funny thing, uh, an ex-classmate of mine, she's no longer in class with me because, haha, I left. But she also graduated. Uh, <laughs> she was watching one of your streams and she calls me over. She's like, Aiden, look, this person sounds like you. And I'm like, Caitlin, what if I told you that's me? <laughs> what if I informed you that, in fact, that's so that weird. may not be me. I was just meowing. <laughs> Oh, so they were watching they the Aaron one, were they? Interview. <laughs> they were watching the interview. Oh, God. <laughs> and they were like, why are they talking about cats? I was like, no, 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 I was in the background meowing. <laughs> <laughs> Except on that stream, Mally had me mute this. Yeah, only <laughs> only Aaron could hear the meowing. <laughs> so, out of nowhere, Aaron just goes like, Jesus Christ, Mally, you really need to put the cat down. <laughs> yeah, with no context, and everyone in chat's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what cat? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's me. I'm the cat that should be put down. In the walls again. Uh, although I did have uh, one moment, IRL, where somebody was scrolling through Twitter and I saw my art flash by and I was just like, oh. <laughs> dodge the bullet, dodge the bullet. <laughs> step away, step away. I need to go to the little. <laughs> Unironically though, I, I keep glancing over at my other monitor. I've just got Snow's like... Uh, Horror Mally fan art. Oh, I just keep staring at it. It's so aesthetically pleasing. Snow, if you're still in chat, I love it. Wait, does they it count are... if I'm watching a video and all of a sudden I get brought up or like it uh, scrolls past one of my videos? I think that kind of like the first time I got brought up in a different commentary video, it I was horrified. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm being perceived. Uh... Yeah. Well, it's not always commentary videos. Sometimes, like, every once in a while, it's, like, in a place I don't... Like, fucking Cecil being all, like, yeah, Ponder Sprocket. And it's like, bitch, why do you know I exist? Cecil, <laughs> I, was, I was shocked when Cecil... Because Cecil uh, got a mention in my... Uh, oh, God, what was it called? The, the video where I try to explain commentary, essentially. Because uh, I mentioned Cecil a fair bit in that because I really liked her videos. And she commented on that video, which, first of all, scared me. Uh, and it was a comment about, oh, okay, so I scare you, or something along those lines. And from that point, we ended up in connection, and that's why Cecil's, like, in the vault video, and I'm in Cecil's. It's so weird yeah. how the connection kind of spreads out, but I like Cecil. Cecil and I have very, very <laughs> different worldviews, but from everything I can tell, she's been on the up and up, so all right, very I mean, much like her. Although I, I, I must admit, that. I do not understand how she does what she does like how she it looks at any of the shit she looks at it would melt my brain like we talked yeah, about how you crazy would be able to like compartmentalize to spelunk into that shit yeah well even just we talk about how crazy art commentary and just general commentary can get <clears throat> cecil's stuff is on a different level because oh, it's, yeah. it, it's not even online stuff like cecil's stuff is a lot more real world mental health crisis stuff mm. it, it's wild mm -hmm. Yeah. And also just like nasty? You know, like dirty feeling. Hmm. Oh, Grungy. yeah. Grungy. Sure. <laughs> Alright, next question. Or do you guys want to. No, no, go ahead. Fangirling about Cecil or Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I'm no, gonna, one, one more comment. I'm going to call Mally one out more comment. for being the fangirl she is. <laughs> when, when Spockter made that video calling uh, Cecil a. Oh, God, what was it? Like. A uh, SJW reactionary. I'm like, <laughs> you tell me you've never watched a Cecil video. 
Oh, uh, Mally. So Nikki in chat oh, said, I remember I first God. came by Mally's channel by pure accident and avoided it because you were friends with Harley. I think Harley is cringe. <laughs> and then months <laughs> later, I met Lumi who kept saying super nice things about <gasps> you, which they weren't even nice things. I kept calling you a twat. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually, the number of people that like my content and that are like, Mally, if you fucking bring Harley anywhere near me, I swear to God. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> I promise Harley's, like, they're better. Because I understand, Harley's like that annoying little brother uh, that people kind red of... Redheaded stepchild. Yeah, like, yeah, redheaded stepchild energy, especially around, like, the Luke era and whatnot. But they're all, like, they were a kid. They're growing yeah. up. There's growing pains. I love Harley. See... <laughs> I'm a simple person. I don't like children. Keep They're not the child a child away. anymore. <laughs> they are a child in my eyes forever. Honestly, same though. They will always be a child for me. <laughs> but yeah. like I straight up, Harles and I had a very rocky start. It's a little bit like it was with me and um Hopeless Peaches. Like uh especially around that time period when I had a very similar opinion to most people. It's like this annoying fucking child. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know yeah. I don't I have no idea when it changed but it changed from this annoying fucking child to I would give my life for this kid <laughs> I don't know when it changed they just grew on me like I, I'm gonna use a quote that Yask and I really like from back in the day uh they grew on me like a particularly annoying fungus I was gonna say like a like a parasitic growth but yeah, yeah that works too but I, I adore the kid they're great I will fight. I will fight for Harley now. Like people will go, Harley's annoying, and I'm like, yeah. So what? I love the kid. We all have our annoying right. phases. Exactly. Yeah. I'm. I'm still in mine. <laughs> Nikki's like, no, anyway. fuck the child, Nikki. And you know what? That's totally valid. You don't have to. That's that. You don't have to like Harley. That's not a requirement. Yeah. But I will fight people if they get on my case for being friends with Harley. It's like, fuck you. I like who I like. Yeah. Mm. All right. So Renbo zero six four asks question for the sprocket. Any tips for people who are not skilled with art yet? At least they added yet. I appreciate oh. that because Jesus fucking Christ, I will get onto everyone who's like, oh no, but not everyone can draw. Fuck you. I will um. Fight. Uh, just like general art tips. I mean, like, like ah. practice is always good. Uh, drawing what you love always helps because you are generally more incentivized to want to get better at things that you love. Yeah, it's it's good to like mix it up and draw things that that like challenge you, especially if you've been drawing like the same thing that you love over and over and over again. the The point is like. If you're not good enough to draw the thing that you love, you are going to try to get better to draw that thing. Yeah. Once you once you get to like a plateau point where you're like, I can draw the thing, I am satisfied with the quality, that's when you usually have to start pushing yourself. I think... Uh, I... Oh, go ahead, Lumi. No, I was gonna say, I do actually have a bit of an art tip. Less small strokes, more just draw very light lines. You don't have to be confident with every stroke. Like, unironically, if I'm art blocked to high hell, I will draw really complex poses, but I will absolutely beat myself up if I try to make them, like, really clean. Draw rough sketches, because those will always come out looking better than those. And the artists in chat will know what I'm talking about when I say those tiny little strokes that you're trying to get one line straight, but it's, like, all sketchy. Mm. Don't do that. That will only slow you down because you're going to try and perfect that thing. Draw really rough long light lines and that shit will get you to be more confident in what you're drawing also try to break things down into basic shapes that will help you actually literally out, about like, to say how that. to actually draw it hmm? i was literally about to chime in with that like break down the human <laughs> body into as many shapes as you can make no, it's a not even just a human it. body Oh, yeah. it's not even just a human body, like, everything applies. Like, if you're drawing a rock, for example, you can break it down to the basic shapes, and that will immediately make it easier to visualize the volume. Like, it's things like that that a lot of people don't realize artists already do. Like, the mm -hmm. people who are drawing from scratch, no sketch, I don't know how they do it, but in their heads, they already know that this is where this is meant to go, because they all started there. Nobody started mm -hmm. off doing confident lines immediately. And I think that the pressure that is put upon people to always have clean art needs to fuck off. Because rougher sketches, they're so fun to do. Mm -hmm. 
So and I actually have like uh, three core bits of advice. So my advice is less technical, I guess. Uh, my first bit of advice is, mm. and this is going to sound really stupid, but allow me to explain, just do it in the sense that if you sit <laughs> there and think about, oh, it's going to look bad or I don't want to try something until I know it will look good, you will never do it and you will never progress. So all you've got to do is sacrifice some bits of paper, allow yourself to cringe at your own bad art, and just keep it moving, because eventually it'll just become natural to you. So don't expect every piece to actually be good. Just scribble some shit sometimes. Uh, because yeah. just doing a little bit constantly will go a long way. Uh, two, trace shit. Fucking tra yeah. I'm tra trace shit. I'm so sick of people being like, tracing is shitting, tracing is learning. Uh, Obviously, you don't pass off a trace as your own thing, but tracing is really important to learning a lot of stuff. So don't be afraid of tracing. God, use reference images. Please, God. Your mind is never as good as a reference image. Uh, and I had a third bit of advice, which is escaping me, but it was important. Give me a second. Hmm. Do you mind if I actually bounce off the yeah, go ahead uh, while I think. tracing thing while you're thinking? Yeah. Uh, with reference images, do not be afraid to draw over them to figure out the actual proportions and stuff. Like, those rough shapes I mentioned, draw them over the reference image. Like, I do this when I'm drawing a pose. I will go over the reference image, I will block out the main shapes, I will make it smaller, and I'll reference that instead of the actual reference image on Zoom. Because that makes it so much easier to understand. Mm. Actually, I saw someone in chat mention before, um, uh, skips away, about speed paints. Yes, speed paints are great because... They show you, uh, depending on which speed paint you get, obviously, but they show you lots of little tips yeah. and tricks and, like, quirks that people have in their art that you might want to, like, incorporate. Like, I remember back in high school, I watched a speed paint of... I think it was Jeff yeah. the Killer, actually. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I think it was a Jeff the oh, Killer speed paint. Of course you were into that. And I... Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> very distinctly a way that they uh, shaded glass and the way that they did the reflections on that glass. I'd never seen anyone else do it, and I, I don't know mm -hmm. if I've seen anyone else do it since, but I have incorporated that into my art ever since, and I never would have thought of it without that speed paint. So speed paints are really good yeah. just to give you those little bits of information and ideas and sort of show you how other people build on their art. So yeah, speed paints are really good for that too. Mm. There's a lot of things you can really do to kind of grow as an artist with things like that, like breaking things down, simplifying them, like, holy shit, when you're drawing, you do not have to replicate every single fucking thing. Like, if you're drawing, um, here's a good example. So one thing I did to draw, like, to learn how to draw glass is I started drawing, and this is gonna sound very on brand as a Slavic person, cough, cough, I used to draw glasses of whiskey with ice in them. <laughs> <laughs> alcoholic nation uh <laughs> jokes aside and i used to just do that and before i got to drawing the really detailed parts of it like the reflection on the glass the liquid all that kind of stuff i would just draw <laughs> and i kid you not i would just draw a cylinder and i would just block in where the liquid would be and that's it that was my beginning sketch and i would sometimes leave with that and that genuinely helped me figure out how the glass should look, depending on the angle. And I think more people should start doing that, where they just start drawing more basic things. Because, I kid you not, those shot glasses, they taught me how to shade liquid, they taught me how to do volume of liquid, they taught me how to draw ice, they taught me how to draw, um, like, how to portray angles. There's several things those shot glasses have taught me how to draw. And a lot of people need to try and do that more than drawing really, really detailed like th things. Like, Jesus fucking Christ, the amount of people I see that are, like, beginner artists who immediately jump to drawing characters. It can work. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, I started off drawing Sonic. And those people who say it's hard to draw Sonic characters, it's really not once you figure out the basic shapes. It's shit like that. I think another thing as well that I think about this a mm. lot because... My favorite fantasy is imagining going back to being a child and doing shit right. Uh, but thinking about like how much of art is actual knowledge and how much of it is muscle understanding. Um, and I, I think it's pretty fair 50-50. But when mm -hmm. we say learn how to do stuff, I feel like 
young artists might misunderstand what that means. Like, it's not the same as book learning something. You can understand how shadow works and color theory and all that sort of stuff, and it won't actually make you that much better of an artist. Uh, a lot of it is teaching it to your muscles uh, and becoming familiar with it. So don't think that if you, you watch a bunch of theory or speed paints, it's going to translate into your art. Like, it's good to have that information. It, it's a way of furthering your art. But again, so much of it is just down to doing, getting used to the feeling of it, knowing how much pressure to apply. It, it's it's not book knowledge, it's action. Mm. Like, I remember, uh, now again, context for those who don't know me, I'm a furry artist. I draw furries. Um, I'm very open about it. I don't give a shit. Like, judge me all you like, I get paid for it. <laughs> Yeah, they make money. <laughs> but, ha ha ha, bragging rights. But, jokes aside, I had these books, and I think I gave the book to my sister, actually. And they would break down drawing animals in a very specific way. And looking back on how it was approached, I would not teach anyone how to draw those animals in that same way. Because they used so many fucking circles when, and this is going to sound really weird, don't hyper-focus on circles unless you're replicating something like the Animal Crossing style, because that's very round. If you're drawing the human body, you're actually much better off breaking them in with, like, squares, uh, fucking trapezoids, or shit like that. Because, which, <laughs> fancy word there, I guess. Because that is gonna be much easier to follow than just drawing, like, a bunch of circles. Like, unironically. And I wish that was taught more in schools as well. Because, I don't know about you guys, but when they taught me proportions on the human body, they hyper-focused on using ovals. Yeah. That stunted me severely. Well, imagine them actually teaching you something. Couldn't be me. Uh, you know what? Bragging right, I actually taught my art teacher how to draw. She was more of a photographer, so fuck you. Haha. <laughs> yeah. I love that teacher, man. She was great. Our art teacher was, was a scary man. I can't even describe it. Um, he was just a scary man. I don't uh, remember if he like, taught us anything other than fear, but... I had two. Because uh, my school ended up uh, with this one retiring midway. It, by the way, she was great. She had her own business on the side making these really hard teddy bears because she would like stuff them with that stuffing. And they were really pretty. And she was so proud of herself. I helped her set up like a Facebook page because Facebook was really big at the time. And she's, she's popped off. She still makes them. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're really cute. If I can find some pictures later, I'll send them to you, Mally. And oh, you, yeah. Tubi, if you want them. Um, But she's the one that kind of sat me down one day and just went, you're not drawing ovals, keep doing that. And then the other art teacher, she was more focused on photography and, you know, actual haha, <laughs> theory. Disgusting. <laughs> because, you know, you totally need to know about your fucking Bronze Age, Iron Age, Stone Age shit. <laughs> Uh, it was actually on the curriculum, she couldn't really control it, but when I had classes on my own with her, and I still have it somewhere, I got her to sit down and draw with me, and she drew this really nice looking can, like, it was just a, like a Pepsi can, and she drew that, and I was drawing with her, and I was like, hey, just do this instead, and afterwards, she was so proud of herself, and I was just like, you do that, you go, you go, queen. Um... And she started doodling more, and each time she'd do it, she'd just get really excited, like, Aiden, look! I drew again! <laughs> <laughs> she was a really young teacher, like, Aww. she's now in her early 30s. <laughs> oh my god, okay. What? Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. she's in her early 30s. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah, that's, absolutely. like, alarmingly young. God damn. Good for her. That's yeah, no, like, my as age. soon as she... Yeah. I mean, as soon as she graduated, she started working at that school, so... Okay. Pop off, like, dude, we were on a first-name basis, it was fantastic, 10 out of 10. I hope more people have an art teacher like her that are willing... Like, art teachers, you have two types. You have the ones that actually are willing to improve on themselves, and the ones that are so far up their own ass, Jesus fucking Christ, I don't know how they see. Like, holy fucking shit. They will not learn anything, they are just stuck in their ways. <laughs> You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've known people like Yeah. Any more questions? Constructive criticism. Oh, yeah, plenty. So, oh. um... Oh. Oh, yeah. I, uh, let's, 
and I'm not gonna disrupt the conversation. Okay. All right, so Tricky Bear or Tricky Bee, I don't know how you want to pronounce your name. So it goes, hey Ponder Mally, if you had to choose a class in TF2 or Team Fortress 2, who would you be? Sniper. And I'm glad you avoided me in that because I don't play that shit. <laughs> Sniper. Uh, I would have to know all the classes, but based on what I remember, probably spy or scout. I could say That's you play scout. I'm, I'm, I would expect Bonk. you to play heavy. Really? Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> the gremlin energy is strong. Bonk! Uh, <laughs> next question comes from Lyle Convoy. Him fucking self. The Bible oh, no. thumper. The Bibble it's bitch, if you may. The Bibble bitch? Already get a question. <laughs> Everybody gets one, no. <laughs> Actually, excuse you. If everyone gets only one, Alan got to have two, so I'm gonna I'm be just fair. I'm just kidding. I'm just oh. kidding. You don't get to joke <laughs> around with me. No. no All right. So Lyle says, "What's the topic of your next video?" That's a spoiler. Uh, also, why did you have me read lines about Liefeld? 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 Oh, oh no, I'm Polish. <laughs> I'm Polish, um, man. I don't know these words. Okay, I. So the video that I mentioned having done stuff forever ago in 2019 for, pretty sure that's the one that I got Lyo for. So that'll come out eventually. I, th that video has to do with a, a particular comic con artist that I was obsessed with for a while. Um, and that's not my next video, though. My next video is either going to be... The first of the big cat project, Kitty Balls, oh God. or what? a video talking about a bad commission experience. God. I'm gonna put money on yeah. bad commission experience. That sounds like it would be easier for you to do. <laughs> it's, it's definitely closer to being done in editing. It's just that I'm editing that one, so the, the instances where I have time or motivation to go and edit it are few and far between as opposed to like when I can just send it off to a different person whose main job is editing yeah mm. mood alright so next question comes from low one isher low one sure I low guess it's sure. Low -isher. Uh, okay. which is question for B are you a kid or are you a squid <laughs> I'm definitely a squid You know what, fuck it. Mally, are you a kid or a squid? I don't know. Squid? I'm a cat. I, I know. Meow. Yeah, exactly, meow. Although, B, I don't think I appreciate you calling me the F-star in Catman. The... What? Yeah, man. I can tell I you I'm not of you, babe. Yeah. Look, I'm half F-slur, I'm allowed to say. I, yeah, but you didn't have to call me the straight man, the f -slur man. <laughs> right, I'm, the reclaiming, I'm, re I'm reclaiming it for myself. Are we reclaiming <laughs> cis now, according to Elon? Yes. <laughs> I had to explain- again, I had to explain to my parents what cis meant. Bruh. Oh. Like, it's, it's one thing to explain it to people, it's another when they get, like, really offended about it. <laughs> well, fortunately, my dad appreciated the uh, the way that the language worked with the Latin and whatnot. He quite liked that, so that mm. wasn't too hard to explain to him. Yeah. All right, and then the last question so far, which uh, <laughs> if people have more questions and they send them last minute, I'm going to fucking okay. It's from Beanie, and they asked, "Have you played Disney Dreamlight Valley?" And if so, or not, either way, which character would you think you have the most fun hanging out with? Currently playing the game and couldn't think of a better question, not gonna lie. Wait, What's the game? Disney Dreamlight Valley? Is that the one where you, that... like, grow plants? I don't fucking know. Uh, I don't know. Oh, let me have a Google. What's it called? Uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley. Dreamlight Valley. I'm gonna say no. I, I very rarely play... I. I'm very picky in the games that I play, uh, and I feel like I would remember playing that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's literally a. Di oh, well, yeah, obviously it's a Disney property. Okay. Disney. Um, 
Wow, what what is this? Disney. Uh, obviously, I have I have never seen nor played this, so I can't really I, answer. I the assume question. it's Farmville, but Disney. Huh. Another Which, Lion uh, Funny. Funny Lumi fact, growing up when I was a really young kid, I used to see the Disney logo and I used to unironically think it said Disnep. Disnep. Which is where <laughs> Disnep comes from. That's alright, I always thought the, the D looked like a G. <laughs> Disney. Disney. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no. Here's the thing, Mally. <laughs> And growing up, right, I was Polish, and like up until I think the age of like fourteen, Once. I used to genuinely think it was Disney. Like I just genuinely thought it was just some weird English thing that just they just read the P as a Y. Oh, I actually used to read that like a Q as well. Disney. Or maybe it was the the D that I sometimes read as a Q. I, I would either read it as a Q or a G. Kisney. Kisney? Jisney? Jisney is the best, though. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Jisney. <laughs> I should not him. smoking while talking. <clears throat> uh fuck no. I am not reading that out, Rembo. I am not calling Ponder that. Oh. Mally can. Mally has no shame. Wait, what? Where? Where's the thing I need to read? Uh, hold on one sec. Nuts? It's from Rembo. Oh. Uh, hold on. Who's- hold on. who's- oh, let's see. <laughs> they fixed it to ping me. Uh, <laughs> not a question, but I just want to say, have a good day, Octomama. <laughs> oh. Hey, I ain't calling Aww. her that. I thought that was gonna be- I thought I was yeah. getting insulted. Yeah, I, I thought, thought it was gonna be way worse person. than that. <laughs> I, just no, I, to... I just don't feel- I just don't feel comfortable calling people shit like that. Well, it's- it, it's like a reference to the videos, like it- Yeah, I know. Okay. Everybody calls oh, no, me the personal thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that's all the questions. Yay! We did yes, it! We did it! Show. I mean, I'm not done yet. I'm only at 16 hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm not done either because oh. I told you I was going to stay up with you. Bruh, I'm dying. I don't know how I don't know how we're going to do this. You I mean, I'm, per I'm actually perfectly fine. Uh, I was fine up until like 20 minutes ago, and now my my vocals are giving out. I would <laughs> offer to help had I not been awake all last night. Give already. me your vocals. Just take them out and give them to me. <laughs> what the fuck? That sounds familiar. <laughs> now I'm coughing. Great, we're all dying. In the middle of a head again. <laughs> what the fuck? Kares, that's hydrate. What the fuck? Alright, here's what I'm gonna do, kids. We're gonna wrap up. I'll throw a video at you while I drink. And then I'll I'll figure out what we do from there. But B, thank you. Thank you for coming and chatting with us and letting us pick your brain a little bit. Hopefully uh, the tangent lines didn't bother you too much. <laughs> no, it's I hope great. they triggered her. <laughs> <laughs> It, it'll only trigger me if it's on the in big time event like VidCon. <laughs> what? This isn't a big time yeah. event. <laughs> it's not like I drew you know these what, the night before. Whoops. <laughs> God, I'm so unorganized. You know what? I'm gonna do it. B, you are never gonna see my art, but I'm gonna include as many tangent lines as I can from now on. Oh, lovely. Yeah. You're gonna create actually... an entire style that is predicated around having as many tangent yeah. lines as possible, but yeah. still discerning some sort of artistic merit from it. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it piss off B style. Oh. <laughs> I actually love what about tangent lines were from, now. from your videos. Are you serious? Yeah, no one ever taught me what they were, and that Ponda oh. kept mentioning tangent lines, and I actually thought you meant tangents as in verbal tangents, and I was really confused. <laughs> oh, no. man. Well, in my defense, I did take, like, a technical graphics class, and we had to do tangents. Yeah, I learned about them from, um, cool, because back when I was learning about comic book, I, there was, like, this huge post that was going around in comic book circles and comic artist circles that was, like, a bunch of different examples of tangent lines and how to avoid them by a comic artist. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I like how notably, except for Lumi with, um... Uh, technical art, which is different. 
Uh, none of us said that our art teachers told us. Yeah, no, yeah. that that was not a thing. No, nope. it it's definitely well, it's it's not a thing that general art teachers teach you. It is definitely more a thing that you are going to learn from an illustrator teacher. Yeah, and like side note on the guy that taught me that the dude literally like had no notice of the fact that I have autism, so I speak to myself quietly to remember things. Yeah. So he caught me, like, muttering to myself, like, this line goes over here because I need to make the house portray in this fucking way. And he, like, made me stand up and he goes, you don't fucking do that! And my class just chewed oh. me the fuck out. And I got banned from my class after that. Oh. <laughs> what? <the fuck? laughs> yeah. I wasn't allowed to come back. He wouldn't let me. Jesus That's Parker. bullshit ableism. <laughs> you weren't even doing anything I don't wrong. Know. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I wasn't even like I wish I wish it was something like me mother and like, oh that fucking basket. <laughs> no, I was just like, yeah, you know, I have to draw the house from this view. Because if you're doing technical graphics, what they do is they will give you like the outline of like, hey, you know, this wall is gonna be like thirty-four millimeters, this one's gonna be uh thirteen millimeters, and you have to draw it and then draw the side uh, view, then you top draw the top view. And then you have to draw it in 3D, <clears throat> which is where tangents come into play. Uh, <laughs> so I was just muttering to myself about that. <laughs> and it backfired immensely because I got kicked out of the class. <laughs> That's still bullshit. That's still bullshit. I think it's funny looking back on it. Oh yeah, it's, it's great as a story. But it's still bullshit. The, te the teacher's actions were <laughs> bullshit. I mean, that's oh, like no. most stories about schooling. It's like, yeah, it's a fun story, but oh my god, that's some bullshit. I mean, Actually. that's just like, isn't that what just what trauma is? A funny story <laughs> that you tell your friends years later? Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> this shit I've told Mally. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, Mally. Mally. Yeah. I'm just saying, she's a quitter. God damn it, stop. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm referencing in this, in this part. Uh, but no, uh, funny thing relating to that, to actually end this up on the actual light note. Uh, there were two teachers. There was the woodworks teacher and then the tech graph teacher. One of them was called Mr. Long. The other was called Mr. Forrest. Mr. Forrest taught technical graphics. Mr. Long taught the fucking woodworks. And we could never wrap our heads around that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always mix them up because of it. Like, your names were perfect. Why don't you just swap names or get married and, like, you know, have the same names? So yeah, either or. Either one fucking subject, yeah. Yeah, either or. We'll, we'll accept either or. <laughs> when yeah. you're skipping your teachers to make it easier for you to remember which teacher teaches what. Was it really shipping if it was, like, spiteful, like, swap <laughs> surnames, you fucking dickheads? You're confusing me. Spiteful yeah, so if you shipping. you think should be in a relationship, it's shipping. Spite Even shipping. out of spite. Spite shipping. Shipping can was, happen for go. any reason. You know what? I guess I shipped IRL people. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> okay, shall we wrap up for this one then? Oh, yeah. before you do, Lyo asked oh. you what did you plug in? <laughs> uh, my phone. Because you charge the, your phone the... off your computer? Well, no, because the VTuber model needs... Needs to come back soon, so I was setting the phone back up. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I just like, why? Why are you so concerned by that? It's just I was just plugging something in. It's okay. Uh, bow, bow, wow. Oh. Anyways, uh. Fuck you, fuck? Lumi. <laughs> Lumi. <laughs> I thought it'd be funny to finish up on that. It's it's extra weird because. Oh, yeah. The, the first one was coming from the ear that is facing my door, which is open. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the fuck? Lumi has been doing this to me all week. <laughs> you know, Chat's the two like VCs no. we've been in. Yeah, all week. <laughs> I mean, B, if it makes you feel better, every time people do it to me, they always do it on my right side. And my right side is a fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, my problem is I just think they're knocking on my window then. Yeah. Yeah. Each time I just ask them, like, hey, man, how did you climb up to the next floor? 
<laughs> nice. Also, quick question, B. Uh, uh are you gonna are you gonna jump in on the horror server? Uh I I I don't know how to how to make it work. What? What do you mean? I I, I downloaded the thing. I don't know how to get it to work. <laughs> oh. You just need the mod shooting hours. Just like same on the other server. Oh, it's literally just the same? Yeah, the only difference to... is that instead of um instead of fabric you use forge. Okay, so I have to download forge. Uh yeah, I think it's hold on, let me check something. It should just be the yeah. same as your other installations. Yeah, I was having problems with that. Oh. Oh no. I mean For some reason it just doesn't like me when I forge. Huh. Alright, we'll have to we'll have to finish fix that later because I feel like you would enjoy the horror stuff. Oh yeah, I I was very excited to jump into it, and then after oh, like three hours of fiddling with it, I was just like, okay, I guess I'll just go cry. <laughs> oh no! I mean, hold on, let me pull up mine real quick and see, because it should just be it should it should be pretty simple, right? Oh, what it's okay. That... I I can fuck up things in remarkably <laughs> shocking ways. Mood. Mood. Mm. Okay. Well, I'll I'll probably jump back into the general chat with everyone every anyway. If you're gonna be hanging around, uh, yeah. go uh, well, I'm fun. I'm actually probably gonna go lay down for go to sleep. Again, I, I didn't sleep last night. Go to sleep. <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go go to sleep. Like may toke up a bit more. And have the <laughs> you best got it. Fucking sleep. Yeah, May, I'm I'm not gonna be sober for any of this fucking stream. I'm staying up until nine in the fucking morning for this shit. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna be able to do it sober. God, I wish I had a so drink. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> you said you're like fifteen or sixteen hours in to twenty four. Uh, uh, I am sixteen and a half 16. in. Yeah, sixteen and a half. Uh, maybe, I'll catch you, maybe I'll no. catch you again towards the tail. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. We'll go and get some rest. You're not. You're not 16 and a half. You're 15 mi hours and 44 minutes in. No, my my counter says 16 and a half. The fuck? I'm going this by my counter. 1544 for me as well. I, ah! Well, my one on the on OBS says 16 and a half, and that's what I'm going by. <laughs> well, Twitch is what you should be going by, so. No. OBS. We'll OBS see. cling. True, so fucking true though. You're getting close to our <clears throat> age of drinking. <laughs> oh god. What you wait? What I you have no hour? idea what they mean. All right, I'll 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 deafen out of this call and set up a video for a hot second and get a cuppa. Ponder, you go to sleep. Lumi, rest oh, your voice okay. for a bit, and we'll we'll see you all soon. I can hear Good the sound. Good night. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Oh, I'm going to die. We won't. Uh, <laughs>